Please rise for the pledge. Try to keep this. A pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Um, You look like Greg, not long enough for you, Carly. You get here. Welcome to the uh, second regular meeting of the Board of Trustees of the Old Spa, uh, July 25th, 2022. We never knew uh, our attendance, but you can see everybody was here. That gets the Zoom generation. Uh, we are fully uh, present as always here. So, welcome everybody. That, that's my mistake, uh, Madam uh, Clerk. I, I, we've never done it during my tenure, believe it or not. Ah, yeah. So we're all here. Yeah. Let's see. First things first, we have minutes to approve, actually two sets. Can I get a motion that the minutes of the June 27, 2022 meeting be approved? I'll make that motion. Trustee Raymond. Second. Trustee Fundesa. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Can I get a motion that the minutes of the July 11th, 2022 meeting be approved? I'll make that motion. Trustee Fundenza? Second. Trustee Baskin, any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, let's go to the prop department. <laughs> oh. Welcome to our new street signs. As long as uh, we get proper funding, uh, I, I had posted this on our, uh, or my Facebook page actually. 91 uh, signs need replacement, as we've said, about $14,800 worth of replacements. We got a proof uh, from our sign printer, and it looks pretty good. Uh, I give Jennifer Moskowitz and uh, Jeff Garis, uh, some credit here for working together to get this together, especially with the logo. What we really wanted to see was if the logo would show up, and I think it really, as they say, pops uh, on this, and uh, it will be very good to see, ultimately, that the trustees look at it as well. Sorry about that. But uh, this is, uh, the running joke is, as uh, a big Union College uh, guy, alum, et cetera, if I had no input that Union Street was the first street done. So I swear, oath of office and all that, but uh, thank you to them. That looks phenomenal. And hopefully we'll get those rolling very soon, especially for our first responders, emergency services. I know rely on those signs when GPS isn't otherwise available. Uh, Saratoga Avenue, uh, I briefly talked about last meeting around 117 Saratoga Avenue. We had some real uh, sinkhole issues basically after the paving from last year. What we found was pipe over pipe, and then another pipe that we had installed during that process. What we didn't realize was the third pipe underneath uh, after ours and the one that we thought was there uh, even existed. What they believe happened was in the old days, the rail lines were on the other side of Saratoga Avenue, and they think that the discharge pipe was put in from that area dropping down the hill. And that's the pipe they didn't recognize as being there. So it was causing a cave in every time they tried to put the asphalt back on top. We went out there with our uh, engineers from Labella. Once we kind of recognized just how bad the situation was, uh, Jeff and Labella came up with a game plan as to how to rectify it. They spent some time patching up the old pipes to make sure they didn't, they didn't continue undermining the situation. And at this point, here's what's left, concrete curb, sidewalk, topsoil, and seed are remaining. Uh, then they'll mill and fill and uh, basically repair the asphalt that just wouldn't seem to set right with Evolution's assistance over there. So they're hoping they resolve this and we'll have a proper flow. 
from those pipes and not have any more uh, sinkholes basically form on Saratoga Avenue. It's kind of one of those one-off situations where you just, you don't necessarily anticipate pipe under pipe the way it happened, but there it was in that situation. Um, they, that question you said that lines was they weakened? They, I don't think they were fully necessarily assembled underneath. And so they, what they did was try to reassemble them uh, with proper fittings just to get anything that was leaking out and undermining to so they were flow out. Undermining That's what I understand it was happening, yes. <laughs> uh, street safety discussion was held on July 13th with Ball Spot Central School District at Martin. We'll have a little bit more about that discussion later, but it was good cooperative effort uh, between the village and the uh, Central School District. I also had a meeting uh, the following Monday with Dan Connor, who is the interim superintendent of the school district. I uh, got to speak with him for a good about an hour, uh, just about his uh, time, my time uh, around uh, the area and whatnot, because he kind of uh, came home or back home in this whole uh, role at this point. Uh, he has extensive experience in the school district and school. Uh, principal and uh, administration and all that. And so uh, he was just excited to talk about what could happen in terms of stuff moving forward, not just with me, but others. He wants to meet with our fire chief, our police chief, et cetera. So he's trying to make good neighbors here uh, for the Central School District. And he's going to uh, come, in, come in and talk to us next month. We're trying to schedule him for the second meeting of the month to give us a presentation, kind of getting to know him. So Dan Connor hopefully will be joining us late next month from the Central School District. The COP plan survey, you'll hear about a little bit more uh, tonight as well, most likely. I just want to remind everybody right to the uh, Village Facebook page. I believe it's on the website as well. Uh, Jen can uh, confirm yes. Uh, you may see the QR code uh, throughout the community as well. Please take the COP plan survey. And you'll hear some of the reasons why I think uh, later on in the presentation, uh, waiting for Amy Fitzgerald to uh, join us from BHAN and she'll explain where we are in the comp plan process. So please make sure you take that for the future of our comprehensive plan in our village to give some input. Uh, they worked hard to refine the questions, so it was a manageable number of questions ultimately, and I think they came up with a good overall uh, survey for everyone to take. Ray Otten, uh, playground update would uh, only be proper coming from you, so go right ahead. Um, past, not this most recent past Saturday, but the one before that, um, was the installation of the playground uh, down at Kelly Park, uh, the replacement for the one that was there and was falling apart. And uh, if, if I could, I know there's a lot of people here that were there to help, but I had to just raise your hands for a second. Anybody that was down there helping, I just want to say thank you, okay, from me personally to all of you. And without your efforts and the efforts of about 30 to 35 people, it would not have happened. Uh, we got off to a little bit of a rough start. Uh, those of you that were there at the beginning, uh, have you ever tried to assemble a school bus? <laughs> it ain't easy, especially when we're made out of plastic and you're supposed to fit on a post this big and you're smaller or whatever. Uh, but once we got started, it, it fell into place, and we had we had folks of every uh, grouping in there, all different groups from the uh, village, um, clubs, and every different age group and ability group. And I think we sort of kept you all busy and had enough to keep everybody hopping for a while. I know we had little kids down there that were helping and were our test pilots. Um, and it, it just showed to me what this village can do when you put together and you get a group together. A lot of good stuff can happen. And yesterday we got the rock in place. And if you haven't been down to see it, go take a look. It's a rock. It's, <laughs> it's big. Um, we did put a little divot in the ground with the trailer, but that will be good. Um, and that uh, should be the plaque should be ready for that within the next two or three weeks, hopefully. And then we'll have our dedication ceremony and then we'll be done. But uh, again, it's just been it, it's been a trip. And it's, I'm just so happy. I was when I went down there yesterday to help Lance with the uh, you know lining up where we wanted to rock and all. 
uh, there were kids playing on the, on the play set. Which, like, cool, this is why we did this. And I talked to the parents while I was there. And they were so happy that they had places for kids to go on and be safe. So I want to thank everybody again. Thank you. Thank you. The Rotary, the uh, Lions, community, etc. I mean, outstanding service from the service organizations. Uh, we can't say enough uh, great things about the things you all do and that everybody did that. Event. So thank you. Saratoga County Fair has come and gone, and uh, it was great to see it back in full force. Obviously, the weather created some issues for people wanting uh, to brave it during the day, but nighttime attendance picked up as the week went on. I know the auxiliary lot was used uh, all weekend long, start, starting, I believe, even Thursday night and then Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So it was good to see that bounce back. Overall, uh, traffic issues up there seem to be reasonable compared to some years. Uh, I know that uh, Dave Bush was working with them during the week as certain things pre uh, prepped up that he needed to uh, handle, but nothing major, major that I heard with respect to traffic circulation. So thanks to Jennifer Clinton and the Fair Board for taking on the new parking folks. Uh, that also made, made sure they managed traffic flow to a certain degree. The only real issue ultimately that we do have to look at with the fair is uh, some fights breaking out with teens uh, throughout the week. And Dave uh, Bush had said to me that he felt it was more than he's ever seen, honestly, which is a little disheartening. Obviously, coming back from COVID, uh, this might be something that was a one-off that we kind of you know, steady out again from that type of circumstance. But it's something to keep our eye on, obviously, and see what we can do to resolve that. <laughs> there were issues with things like the bear tent or anything like that. That's the, I guess, the irony of it all. It was just overall over anxious teens getting into it. And that's not appropriate, not an appropriate place for it. And we'll have to see what we can do to make sure we eliminate that as well, because a successful fair makes a successful village for us during that week. There's a uh, New York Forward uh, grant and DRI as well. Wanted to uh, just kind of read uh, an email we received, uh, exciting news for uh, New York's downtowns, both large and small. Governor Hochul announced $200 million in funding for two major downtown revitalization initiatives. New York Forward, a program aimed at rejuvenating New York's smaller and rural communities. And round six of the state's successful downtown revitalization initiative, DRI, each funded at $100 million. Uh, the first five rounds of DRI provided $600 million to 59 communities for projects that are now reinvigorating downtowns throughout the state. New York Forward accelerates and expands that momentum by providing $100 million in funding, as well as capacity building workshops and technical assistance for the small the type of smaller and rural downtowns typically, typically found in villages, hamlets, and other small neighborhood scale municipal centers. Together, these programs will ensure that no community is left behind in the unprecedented renaissance and downtown revitalization sweeping across New York State. Communities are strongly encouraged to provide a letter of intent to apply for DRI in New York Corps by August 10th. Further program materials will be available on July 25th. And uh, there was a press release from uh, Governor Hochul's office on that. So it's something that, as uh, Liz had pointed out as well, like Scott Ostrander uh, from Milton sent it to me at the same day I was looking at it. So we're all on the same page that this is something that might be very beneficial to the village and downtown, especially. Uh, what we did notice, and uh, Julia pointed out, that it does not have much in terms of allowances for infrastructure necessarily in roads, but that doesn't mean that we can't take advantage of other aspects in this whole situation. So. Uh, we will be taking a good look at this, trying to put together our uh, application or pre-application, whatever you look at it as, and uh, get something in to maybe take advantage of that. I want to talk uh, preliminarily about birdhouses because I know every time I turn around, people are asking me, when are we getting the birdhouses back? When are we getting the birdhouses back? And uh, Mark Luck uh, is uh, just such a great person with that project and wants to get that back on full throttle uh, this year. Uh, it was in front of the Committee on the Arts a couple of weeks ago, or a few weeks ago, and uh, they approved the idea of having the birdhouses back. But as with everything in life, funding is going to be the question. Uh, there's about $15,000 needed to make sure this project gets off the ground and running the right way. There's a $5,000 grant that the Committee on the Arts had suggested uh, the village back. 
ultimately and sign off on. So that leaves $10,000. For now, we are not going to uh, pursue it in this meeting because we are trying to actually approach the town of Balson and the town of Milt to see if they have any kind of commitment they can put forward for this to lower the amount of $10,000 into something a little bit more manageable for the village. So we'll see where this goes. We'll see what the uh, whole bag of tricks is here with uh, our uh, towns and see if we can get the birdhouse program back to where it was really before COVID kind of took it out from under itself at that point in time. So stay tuned for that. But I just want everybody to understand that birdhouses are front and center in something that we're looking at as a village right now again. Swimming under the stars, August 6th, 8 p.m. to midnight. I got only a couple weeks to get my summer body together, I guess, if I'm going to go swimming for that. Uh, but it's going to be a great time, uh, a community effort for sure. Uh, we have a motion later on to approve uh, the event itself uh, on the agenda. But uh, again, it's uh, basically a collective effort between DPW and our swimming staff, our pool staff, to put together an event at the pool. Uh, under the lights with the DJ and food. Uh, we'll uh, have more details as we get closer, obviously. Uh, we'll be putting out on our Facebook pages, et cetera. But Swimming Under the Stars is back as well, August 6th, 8 p.m. to midnight. Ethics code uh, update. I uh, asked uh, Julie Gazitos uh, where we stood with it earlier today, and uh, here was the answer. We actually finished as a committee. I sent approximately 75% to Carla for review. This Carla right here. She asked for a word copy and I need to send that. I just need to type out the remaining 25% is sent along to the committee to confirm it as we agree, and then to Carla for her review. Once you review, so I can distribute the changes to the committee and then forward to you and the trustees to discuss and improve, approve. So uh, great work by our ethics code revision uh, advisory board panel, whatever you want to call it, uh, but they did great fast work for us, all things considered, and uh, we'll probably be talking a lot more about that very soon once Carla reviews it, like you've got nothing on your list to review, right? She did send it to me and word a couple other things today, so Good. I have it there. But, I mean, your list only has 27 things on it, I mean. <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, we'll, we will get to that very soon. Got an email uh, response today uh, because I was asking uh, essentially the question, where do we stand with the question of rickets? Uh, we haven't heard much uh, since my last update on that. And uh, Nicole Hins responded, good afternoon, Mayor Rossi. We have finished investigative field work and our consultant, HRP Associates, is working on the remedial investigation report, the RIR. Once the RIR has been reviewed and accepted by the department, Another fact sheet will be released. I will provide you with both documents once available. Additionally, HRP is working on the construction completion report, the CCR, for the building demolition. As requested by the building inspector, I will also provide this to the village once it is available. Please let me know if you have any questions in the meantime. Thank you, Nicole. She's the assistant engineer environmental of the Division of Envir Environmental Remediation in the DEC. So they are still moving forward with that. Uh, just they're finishing reports essentially and are going to provide us with more information soon. Good to know that it hasn't fallen off their map and just want to make sure that we were missing something because this seemed a little quiet over there, but that's why. Um, I just wondered if it's still under the original owners or has it transferred over to the I don't believe the county's taking it yet because the county does not want to take it until it's in a position to have no liability attached to it for the county. That's my understanding at least. Want to give kudos uh, to our fire department for Saturday, the hottest day of the year at that point, at least. 20 Fenwick uh, Street, the uh, law office there had a fire uh, through in its basement. And I think it was Fred Harris walked by and smelled smoke and called in and saved probably a good portion of that building. Because once everybody got there, once I got there to see it, you could smell it from a good distance what was going on. And it was festering. There was smoke coming directly from the front door. They obviously had to do some things to cut through and get to the fire or the smoke status, uh, which was likely electrical in some format in the basement area. But uh, they did a great job to preserve the building. I uh, met the owners uh, yesterday, actually, after they came back from the uh, Long Island area, and they were very thankful for the job that was done to preserve that building and are working already to get the uh, building back online. Uh, with the assistance of the building inspector and the fire department. 
That was uh, Eagle Matt Lee's tag day. So we saw a bunch of firefighters with shirts and ties on, putting their gear right on over their shirts and ties. It was clearly a sweaty situation uh, for them and anybody else had to put that gear on that day. So thank you to them for that hard work to preserve that building and make sure everybody was safe in that process. I think there's no better way to end than that and to lead to liaison reports for that. Yeah, I, I'd like to just like give a little bit. Uh, I am trying as much as possible to join their meetings um, once a month. I know they're open to the public, right, Christine, if people yeah. wanted to yeah. join and kind of see what you guys are about and if there's some interest there. Um, the BSBP is on track with revamping their online marketing. Um, they have tapped prolific marketing to assist them with that. And right now they're specifically targeting trap builders, people that are coming in from the area to draw them into the Boston staff. Um, it, some of the discussion we had was, um, you know, I asked them to make sure they kind of keep us updated how they're marketing the village and they were already working on how to do that. And so as soon as I get information on that, I'll be sure to share that with the board and with the public. Um, just some events. Um, this one is very near and dear to my heart, but uh, Elena Wise, she is taking over her godmother's business on um, Rosalina's store on 350 and um, everyone is looking at uh, But that ribbon cutting will be July 29th at 5.30. So new, but also kind of not new business. And I'm just glad to see it continue in her name. Um, next breakfast mixer is at our very own Ribbon Cafe on August 2nd. I'm really excited. That starts at 7.30. Um, and then the ice cream social. Um, everybody really loves that. This year it's on August 4th. It starts at 6 p.m. at the Iron Springs. And this year the BSBPA is teaching their non-for-profit um, membership. And they're going to be volunteering, scooping the ice cream, and having drinks there. So come and learn about our community a little bit more. and and listen to some good things. So. Kevin's gonna have a tough uh, act to follow in terms of Jamie at Front Street Social when he did the uh, breakfast mix service. <laughs> so Jamie went all out. So Kevin's got a very high bar there uh, to be at Ribbon Cafe, but he does a great job. I'm sure he will. Sean? Uh, yeah. Um, I had uh, a couple of weeks back, I met with uh, Jeff Gowries, our APW superintendent, and we talked about some of the sewer issues that we identified for the last couple of years that were highly problematic. And um, I called a meeting, um, Mayor Rossi attended, uh, we had a representative from our village engineer, uh, Lavella Associates. We also had a representative from uh, the engineering firm currently doing our water feasibility study, um, Verge. Um, and we talked about what I basically brought up in March, um, budget workshops regarding a phase one, phase two of uh, sewer assessment. And we, um, the idea that we should do a study because these areas should be uh, video inventory um, with potential, you know, flow ratings uh, to determine what condition these areas that have already been identified as problematic. Um, are they, do they need repair, do they need replacement, and basically develop the scope of services to perform that. Um, during the discussion, um, it was determined um, that the, the mayor thought the best course of action would be to move to wait and couple it with a water feasibility study. Um, and uh, with the idea that um, if we're going to replace a water line, because the sewer line is also in the street, uh, we would have replaced it at the same time, um, which does have a certain economy of construction. Um, however, uh, that only really is an economy if the sewer line actually has to be replaced. If it's in good condition or can be repaired, it costs far less just to do that. Um, but basically, um, it, it was decided that we would wait and 
with the hopes that potentially a grant, we would be able to determine that in a year or two. Um, I'm not a big fan of that approach. And uh, these were already identified for a couple of years now as being problematic areas. So, but, um, you know, I'm gonna defer to the mayor's wisdom on this. Uh, the only thing I would say, we are kind of rolling the dice. And uh, if something does happen, whenever you have to do something on an emergency basis, it typically costs two to three times what it would do cost if you had planned for it. Um, so, I mean, the wait and see approach might work out fine. Um, I just, I know personally, I, I've, uh, I don't necessarily think that that may be the best course of action, but I, as I said, I would defer to the mayor. We've got more to talk about with respect to water and sewer uh, in the next 15 years uh, to the price tag that we received of $58 million coming up later in the meeting. And you'll see why there's kind of a, let's make sure we're doing it right in terms of the dollars and cents of it all. We get to that part of the discussion. We'll wait for, uh, I think that's on new business coming up, uh, letter C. So I won't belabor the meeting. Let's just say, stay tuned for that. That is it for DPW and your liaison report. So Ben, go ahead. Um, so in terms of the uh, park and tree, um, the uh, sort of committee coming out of that Friends of Woods Ball Park um, is having a cleanup this weekend. And I was wondering, um, Gina, do you have like details of that about like what hour to show up or what tools might people might need or anything you want to share about? Uh, Mark and I decided to take the lead on this event. <clears throat> as far as tools, basic uh, shovel, glove, wheelbarrow, if anybody has an edge trimmer, edge trimmers, although we will be bringing those and we were arranging for DPW to get a lot of tools that we'll need. This is a spruce up. This is weeding, trimming, cleaning up. So there really is a rocket scientist waiting need for that. And we'll have water and ice, I think water for everybody. Um, as far as the time, I'm gonna to defer to Judy on that because I think, did you send out an email with the time? Just the date. Okay, so what did we say, 8 a.m.? Right, what will you have? I was your market. Right. We got Thursday night market and Saturday morning market. So the whole idea that an emotion at least would be to play around the around that, right? Yeah. So Friday. Well, I think some we have some people who can try this so Friday, Saturday afternoon, and Sunday. It's Sunday afternoon. No, no Sunday. All day Sunday. There's nothing else going on. No. It's just the concert down the other end. Okay. So we're not we so Friday at six people can get up and work. So we just do what, two hours? Two Here, hours. Here's what I'm going to suggest. Come to consensus over the next day yeah. or so. Yeah, Let us know, and I'm we will highly talking. publicize the event. How's that? We have, we have a meeting tomorrow. There you yeah. go. And, um, you know, okay. I apologize. I will oh, set the so date. Yeah, no, no worries. So we get to know though at least that uh, we do have that coming on our agenda, and then we'll get the specific hours. Once you have approval, you can make the time. So we're yep. at that point. Okay. Yeah. Have, have approval. Thanks for organizing. Um, they are uh, the uh, the friend of Windfall is also developing a survey to send out to businesses. So I don't think it's done enough yet, but uh, the pilot testing with the SBTA and. Uh, Business in the Park. Um, it's supposed to go out. Like it's supposed to go out. You know exactly. Or boom, it'll go out soon. Um, I, I sent it. So yeah. Uh, there's a. Uh, What's up, Ben? Finish this report, please. <laughs> um, there's an upcoming uh, tree project. Um, Lindsay will talk more about the trees, but one of the things uh, that's been suggested by Christopher from Cornell. Is that we develop a list of trees that are good trees to plant in our area with our PA soil and you know how big they are and everything. So um, that we the uh, Park and Tree Board is working on a uh, a draft policy that was uh, run by us and, and Carla about um, people planting trees in the village, uh, both in parks or you know right away, and. Um, and so what trees should there be and where and when uh, can that happen? So that's something being worked on. 
Um, the House and Garden Club came and asked the Park and Seaboard approval for $2,000 of to be allocated to the village for the whole nine springs. Um, and uh, we started a, just a. Can I interrupt you for yes, on that? Because I, I met with them and they never came back and let me know if there was a motion uh, to be had to this. I, I am happy to add the motion if it's something that we do need yeah. to approve. So if somebody could write that up for me in the interim to the degree you have the correct information on, I would appreciate it. But we do have to communicate with our, and I've said it in an email, I'll say it again just for everybody. Our board chairs on short notice because we can't wait for their minutes all the time to come through. But the boards have basically got the first layer of guessing something that has to come to us for ultimate approval. We do need the chairs to sort of send through to us the motions that they approve that we essentially are going to rubber stamp or at least discuss in these meetings. That That's something we have not been doing well. We're working on it. Here's a case where we're, well, we're resolving I, tonight, at least. I was just wondering all they want to do is it's the same categories because they, would, they put out a list that's correct. Winter. They want to change that. We, we that sat down with Julia. Does that require a board to do that? Or could you just approve that? As long as it's not like so, for what they requested during the budget workshop, which was actually pushed through through the park and tree, was shrubs, plants, you know, annuals, perennials, you know, what have you. Uh, now, obviously, that was approved by park and tree board and approved by the village board through the adoption of the budget. If they do want to change it significantly, they would have to go through the park and tree board for approval. Which they did. Which yeah. they did. They, yeah. The park and tree board said, yeah. It wasn't a significant, it's, you know, this push instead of that push. But we still have to ratify the Park and Tree Board's we, approval. If yes. If it's in the same category. Same thing with the Arts Committee. If it's okay. in the charges, at least that I found, I mean, unless something you have to them to write up a list of what they're going to buy with the 2000. Well, the, the same motion approved by Park and Tree should be the same motion that appears before us ultimately. Uh, this is one of the things that we were having trouble with Wiswall, Friends of Wiswall, because some certain things were getting added that weren't actually approved. We had to make sure we talked to Mike to say, Mike, what was the actual approval? We got it ultimately. So it's that kind of communication we need better overall. Mm -hmm. we, we got we got some time uh, for that. So if you, you want to get it together or email Mike or text him or something, feel free and we'll get it on there. I have no problem doing that for this meeting because we didn't know it was coming. We just didn't hear what it was ultimately. Okay. All right, so that happened. Um, it's counted on 13th, I believe, but it's not on the count yet. Maybe it's tipping on 13th, August. Um, Arts Committee, they're still exploring different options uh, for the mural um, to compensate for the fact that the initial idea that the wall was very uh, jagged, I guess, or even nothing settled yet. They've sold 11 planners so far. There are photos on the website, $75 for a small, $100 for a large. Um, they started a discussion on grants and how the committee would coordinate with local artists when there's a local grant uh, opportunity. Uh, so we just started that conversation. Um, something that um, I'm very excited about, they're having something called Sounds of Summer, two concerts on the Porch of Brookside. August 7th at 2 p.m. Uh, there's a saxophone quartet in mm -hmm. August. What? Go ahead, Tom. Did it 3 change? PM. 3 p.m. Oh, 3 p.m. Okay, thank you. 3 p.m. And then August 14th, uh, there's uh, like half an orchestra coming. So, where'd the other half go? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to watch. <laughs> um, so, that's going to be fun. Um, Boston Area Senior Center, they're doing lap ropes for veterans. If anyone wants to help with that, um, you can contact Boston Area Senior Citizens. They're also working on a new member orientation and in the planning stages. So, if anyone wants to help think about how to develop a new member orientation, they're also looking for volunteers to do that. And just uh, the BACC and BARC, they're continuing their normal program. BAC is going to try to uh, bring back uh, team nights in the fall if this if this continues for a little bit. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Um, the library of Ward met and um, there's a lot of terrific programs at the library, just about every stage from toddler on up to adult, um, including some sort of clean programming. So please check out the website and uh, end those. Um, the 
library is very excited about the uh, the master plan that uh, came out and is looking at various grants that they could apply for um, and uh, to start to pull together a committee to do the fundraising. So like, um, start with hopefully phase one. Of, of that I think eventually Paul's going to come and talk to us. Uh, we'll get it scheduled probably in September or something like that once they're in a firmer uh, stance and where they're going with this. So we right. can't, can't wait for all of you to see it as well. But I, I think the, the board actually approved, approved the plan approved, itself. Yeah. The plan itself and, and they should move forward with um, Parking three uh, then already talked about uh, the three guys in terms of developing to make it, you know. There's in the um, grant is a huge list, but to narrow it down to appropriate trees by size. Um, so you don't want to plant a tree that is going to be sky high and huge root system in the right of way because we've got those trees and we're cutting them down. Um, so, you know, what's a medium size or smaller tree? Also, by, um, you know, the soil type, shade, location. So that'll uh, that's under development, and they'll be you know we'll be putting it, uh, making it available for everybody, and and the same guides can be used for people planting their own trees on the property as well. Um, the tree grant, um, the uh, the park and tree board uh, approved the uh, the the draft of the um, urban forestry inventory and management plan, which is a very beefy document with a lot of information on, on our trees. And uh, DC is needs to um, basically bless it, which is happening. And then it, then it will come back to us. And uh, the consultant, David Resources, will, will do a uh, public presentation to the board, either as part of a board meeting, or we can set that up. Um, they just uh, notified us that 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 um, you know it'll be probably about a month or so before they're ready to do that. Think about it. Yeah. Just quickly, I have some, I have some interesting tree stats. People might there's 1,127 trees in this village, but public trees, 58 stumps, 486 vacant sites. Uh, 17 percent are in good condition, 70 percent fair, 1 percent poor, 2 percent dead. 45% are Norway maple, which Christopher says is uh, too many. They're invasive and you actually can't buy them anymore. So uh, just be good to diversify our trees. Norway just called and said, that's not nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, that is our liaison reports. I'm going to uh, switch things up because I promised Amy, who's got a little bit of a travel uh, scenario uh, to uh, leave us with later. Uh, Amy Fitzgerald from Behan, uh, the opportunity to speak and present right now. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I met with Karen Martell and Matt Erkeline and uh, the office staff and Amy just to make sure we we're on the right track with comprehensive plan and had a great discussion about where we're going and where we are and everything else. And before I steal any of her thunder, I want to introduce Amy Fitzgerald again from Behan Planning and Design to talk to us about where things stand. Go ahead, Amy. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh. Small presentation. Sure. Make sure you're good and loud. Only this microphone sometimes is a little finicky. So. so yeah. Um, plan. Amy, come come right in the middle to you, right next to that, if you can. Thank yeah, you. It'd be good and loud for the folks in the back. Okay. I know you. <laughs> so the last plan was done in the nineties. So it's time to do an update. Um, the process of uh, the RFP went out last year and, and the steering committee has been working. Um, they started, I think, on January, I think, started meeting. Uh, twice a month, they have their topics that they picked mm -hmm. for their priority topics. So the steering committee is pretty large, 18 people. I, I can't hear what you're saying, so I can't hear if you have questions. Do you start in January? Uh, no, we start yes. last year. Last year. Um, the, actually, probably on January, February 2021, because we really didn't start meeting until the summer of uh, uh, 2021. It's a large part of the committee. Most of that time was to determine how we should proceed. And that was determined probably on November, and then we started a month meeting. 
Right. So the RFP was pretty robust. It told us exactly what we were going to do. And it's a little different from a usual <laughs> comprehensive plan update. Um, you know, the steering committee is meeting themselves and having them pick their own topics to go with. And that's very helpful for me. <laughs> it's just a different process. So spring, summer, fall, we've been, they've been doing their meetings, but they're open to the public. We're also going to the, um, we're doing some public outreach this summer and they're going to the concert, setting up a table and asking people to do the survey, which is out now on that slide. Um, and just, we're gonna go to the Haiku Social, just let people know that they can do the survey and that this update is happening. And then in the fall, we'll have a draft plan, which we will also then come back and present the, the draft plan to the board. And then we'll do um, also a draft speaker environmental review, generic environmental review. And in the in the late fall winter will be the final plan and the, the final speaker hearing to adopt the speaker um, environmental quality review. Could you move closer to the microphone? I'm getting text messages that they can't hear you. Sorry. <laughs> Um, so that's the overall process. Basically, we're we're in the thick of it. We're doing the survey. We're doing topic-based meetings. We're getting all our stuff together. In the fall, we'll have a draft plan. By the Christmas-ish, there should be a final plan. Just to uh, give some of the confidence for those that may not have seen the survey yet, uh, that we're going to do a couple different things to make sure if we'll flip page. <laughs> and perhaps uh, you'll see there, uh, especially on Zoom land, you'll see it better uh, the way the survey looks. We're going to make sure that they're in the water bills, uh, right. this go around mailed out, but also uh, I know there were two developments that were flagged as people that wouldn't see them in a water bill for various reasons, uh, Mohegan Hills and Double Day Woods. So uh, Amy's helping us get about two, <laughs> you brought them with you, yep, 200 uh, surveys so that we can get those distributed to them as well. And if you know anybody else that would be in similar circumstances, let us know. We have time to get those surveys, uh, get paper surveys out to you. We ask folks to use the QR code when possible and take it on your device because it helps tabulate much more easily. But if you can't, you'll have the paper survey. Go ahead. If you can't, then it says on the bottom to return it to the offices. Village offices, Village yep. Offices. It's okay. <laughs> So um, yeah, the QR code is on the paper survey. So people are like, okay, I can just do this instead. Great. Um, and then I've made some poster size survey announcements with the large QR code. That's the little image that we're gonna post around town, just like in a shop window at the park, it's that kind of thing. Um, and there's some small like desk size ones to put in like the village offices, the library. So hopefully we'll get a lot. Of, so far we're up to 140 online. So that's pretty good with that, you know, even getting them out for the water bills. And the last one was just the blog post, Facebook page post, letting people know. So please, if you if you would like to, please take the survey. <laughs> and then just next slide. So the other thing, uh, we're currently working on the community profile. So that's just, you guys have Three recent plans. There was an existing conditions report um, for this comprehensive plan that just came out last year, and economic development report, and a pedestrian and bike plan. These all came out very recently. So we're looking through those and just trying to take uh, best insights. Those all will be included with the plan, but we're trying to do our own little profile from what we've heard with the steering committee and try to do it all together, like a little bit of a literature review. And then the next tasks are just the part looking with the draft plan, addressing your priority issues, which were identified in the um, RFP, like downtown charm, and keeping that, and um, a few other ones. <laughs> and then you articulate, so we're going to do a large visioning workshop, hopefully large, we'll try to get everyone to come. It is listed on the survey, it's August 30th, you can make it two hours. And we'll try to come up with a vision for the village for the next 10 years. And from that, we'll get um, goals and sort of the implementation strategy framework in September and October. And that'll be like short, medium, long term. What's realistic? What can we do? You know, you always want to say the desired state, our vision, our goal, but you know, what, 
what can we do short term, medium term, long term? And then, yeah, the land use elements, you know, once you have your goals, how can we change what's currently happening to try to achieve that? And so we're, we have a GIS subcontractor to help us. Um, there's a lot of mapping already in the existing conditions report with like land use and zoning, but he'll work on that and show like what we hope to see the desired effect in that. And special thanks to the comprehensive plan committee event at one point rather they were trying to do the september 1st uh session with the uh, community and public uh we noticed it was probably a little too close to labor day weekend we want to get max participation on it uh we we're going to try for the 31st but to get the room uh we did the 30th i think uh, with john's help after that so august 30th is a big day so first get that survey filled out then uh, stay tuned and come give us some ideas and thoughts on August 30th uh, with the uh, presentation and materials. I'll be uh, pretty much done at that point or to that point. Uh, so just stay tuned for all that. Yeah, that's it. Any questions? Any questions? Uh, we'll uh, start with the board and then move to the audience if anybody has anything. I did have one quick question. Uh, I had a resident ask about. Uh, there wasn't a question about parking. If we wanted, John, if we wanted some, somebody wanted to submit their input on that, should we just have them email Karen or? Well, or it's just a blank box at the end of the survey. Okay. What did we miss? What What do you want to talk Okay. About? She took it, so she must have not seen that. So, um, question. But okay. otherwise, there is a contact us button on the steering committee page. So okay. You can just write in. All right. I'll have a reach out. Thank you. Um, I. Just think, you know, I know the Comprehensive Plan Committee is aware of, of the situation with the county. And, you know, I think and I expect you will be taking that as a if this happens, because that, you know, will have a major effect. I actually brought up to them both the county and the uh, Maplewood Manor and Kermery site as well. Yeah. I think it, it has a yeah. common link as in terms of land positioning. Yeah. And so I did raise to them, please keep, keep that in special mind because we have applied that over the last few months well, or something. You know, we've yeah. had Angelica and Ricketts and, and those sites out there for a while, but the nursing home and now the, the, the prospect of the county may leave us either, you know, vacant building the vacant land, um, you know, is the major major event that could change the direction and we'd love the, the comprehensive plan committee to you know see okay if that happens what will we do on those sites well we already know the nursing home is up uh, up on the market but um you know the county thing is a question mark great so one of the major issues big issues is those vacant sites and how to deal with them yeah definitely be addressed We'll, you know, put the county. And I, I'd like to ask how much, um, you know, since the next step after a comprehensive plan is usually rezoning, and since our zoning code is a little bit out of date, um, that will be the next step. I think we all agree to that. Um, how much guidance will the comprehensive plan give to the zoning? Because I've seen various comprehensive plans that you know don't give a lot of detail about that and then others start to show well we think this section of town should change you know should be more mixed use or something like that so i just wondered where you thought the plan will come out i think it'll be more of us because two of the steering committee meetings um in september will be talking about land use and zoning so i think we'll be on the more about end of that yeah. so you'll get more guidance to um you know for rezoning yeah so i think that's important and one of the things we talked about at our meeting with karen and matt uh, was just the timing of getting that next uh professional uh or engineer not actually more lawyer i guess in, in that uh, case consultant uh, for the zoning process, zoning law process, uh, one did really do it. And I think the general consensus was once a preliminary report is ready, then we can drop an RFP with a little bit more certainty of what we're asking for and aim to get them in place in some format in the spring of next year as that plan finalizes and we can turn to them at that point in time to begin their work. 
when it comes down to it. So we're a little ways away from it, but uh, time flies when you're having fun, right? So we'll uh, we'll definitely be managing that so that we're not wasting time in that respect. I mean, in the audience, uh, I did uh, have a question pop in about uh, reaching people that don't use technology and don't go to the ice cream social, et cetera. Uh, this is one of those, I think we have to rely on word of mouth uh, out there to let people know if this exists, carry the QR code with you if you want and let them take it uh, when you see them you know, on the street or visiting them. Uh, again, we'll put them in the water bills. So you'll be getting those soon. That way uh, we spotted the uh, double day in Mohegan Hill situation. Any other larger situations like that where people that you think need paper copies, just let us know if the village offices will get accommodated. John, it, that's right too. I think we did uh, put those. Visitor Center, which is the Bottle Museum, if I remember correctly, the museum, Ellie. <laughs> advise you get it to some of the eateries, particularly, you know, where folks, maybe our renters, you know, frequent. I, I don't think Cumberland Farms takes, you know, puts things out. They would be a good one, you know, but other, you know, Dunkin' Donuts, uh, the diners, you know, I think, those places where- I think where, Brookside, the other museum, the <laughs> museum uh, should also, <laughs> yeah. you, you two took that out. I'm just gonna call them both the museum because we're lucky enough to have right. them, but, but those mean, places. For, folks for breakfast, lunch, et cetera, and they may not, you know, be aware um, because we do have you know, almost half our population is renters and they're not gonna get that water bill. And they may not be on Facebook, maybe put it on Instagram, other sources, you know, try to get it as wide a, a group as you can. Yeah. But we won't be putting on TikTok, I, I assure you that. <laughs> <laughs> Most people will be around town for it. It's very comfortable. There's little instructions on it on how to use the QR code. Yeah. yeah. But, um, Come close early because that vent is going to make it impossible here. You know, I'll tell you that. It's true that if they aren't comfortable taking it online, well, I'm thinking more the population that would be comfortable just carrying a phone but isn't tied in that much with what's going on. So, yeah, if anyone wants to send me like a list of local restaurants, I can try to. Are you going to have posters throughout the village? Um, doing like eight to ten. Everywhere, but I mean, if anyone has specific ideas of where else we should go, like we can park it. Be like four or five storefronts in the area. I, I would say it's folks that know folks that live in Colonial Hills uh, who often feel detached in these situations. Uh, it might be good to remind them they're going to get them in their water bills at the very least. So uh, that would be a good group to flag uh, that often complains that they aren't paid attention to for whatever reason. Please flag it to them uh, so they know that it's not just the kind of, you know, uh, the extended car warranty uh, type sure. thing in their water bill or something like that. So, you know, there are plenty of ways, John. I want to underscore the uh, meeting on August 30th at 7 p.m. That is probably the most important meeting for the village in reference to the National Park because that is where the individuals are coming together and Kind of what's on the vision. And I would ask not only to attend that meeting, but also to go to the village website and scan the minutes of the Master Plan Committee. Because the Master Plan Committee, over since last uh, December, in November, has been looking at all the major issues that are facing the village. And it's those issues that are going to really inform everybody as to who we are and what we should be doing in the next 10 or 15 years. Without that knowledge, if you come to that meeting on the 30th, you're going to really perhaps have to do a lot of catch up at the meeting. It'll be much easier to go to the website and read uh, or at least scan the minutes. Uh, and they also have a summary of what each meeting ended up doing. Will there be like a presentation at the beginning to sort of summarize a little bit? Okay, so at least they won't be completely taken off guard, but you're right. There are plenty of materials to study up to be fully abreast of the situation when you come there on August 30th and maximize it. Amy, uh, I don't see any other questions on Zoom or anything like that. So uh, we will release you so you can get home. And uh, thank you very much. And 
look forward to hearing more from you soon on uh, further <coughs> deliverables, et cetera. Where should I put the 200? Uh, you want to give them to me? I'll make sure they get uh, where they should be, and we'll go from there. Uh, we'll move over to Treasurer's Report, which was uh, sort of uh, moved uh, behind that. So go ahead. Okay, so we just wrapped up our monthly reports for June. Um, those will be going out to the board probably by tomorrow. Um, some of the points that stood out the most is that we received 115,000 um, in sales tax revenue for the month of June. Um, this is down 22.2% from last June, June of 2021, um, and down 7.2% from 2020, 2020, June of 2020. Um, revenue received from the pool has totaled $10,320, which is up $14 from last June. Um, that to be said, it does appear that there is a steady flow of income for July already, um, which shows an increase, um, steady increase from last year's pool revenues received. Uh, year to date expenses for the one month of the fiscal year that just went by um, should be about 8%. For the general fund, it is at 12%, sewer fund 12%, and library at 10%. Um, one of the major contributions to it being over what the one month expenditure should be is just due to the beginning of the fiscal year. A lot of department heads are ordering their um, expenses to restock up for the fiscal year or even putting in the orders for any equipment or expenses that may have long delays. Um, water and sewer bills are getting ready to be mailed out. They are on track to be sent around August 1st, as stated on the um, survey that was just talked about will be in um, your water bills. Um, so if you want those paper versions and you receive water bills, um, they will be being mailed directly to you. Um, as a reminder, once you do receive that water bill, you do have 30 days, which would bring us to August 31st, um, to pay that without receiving that 10% penalty. Um, and just to give a breakdown of what we billed for water and sewer this billing cycle, um, water was billed at $421,000. Sewer was billed at $115,000. And previous balances that still remain on bills is about $100,000, which is pretty average um, for each billing cycle. Um, fees for not reporting a read within the 30 days is $19,900, um, which is about 398 accounts that did not report within the 30 days as stated. Um, this is actually down about 20% is what normally does not get reported. Generally, we are around 500 accounts that don't have that reading in. And so this time we're just below that 400 mark. So we're getting better to getting those um, meter reads. Uh, I think it's 2416, 2416 accounts. And we, we are adding a few from the new um, accounts that are just outside of the really fun. We still a lot of people reporting. It, it, it's, it's under, yeah. Um, could you comment um, on the sales tax? Sales tax, yeah. So, why do you think there is no? There's a variety of reasons. I believe um, the Saratoga County newsletter that um, the mayor commented about last meeting was stating that there was um, an increase of sales last year just due to inflation, due to you know COVID, you know catching, you know coming back and freezing up sales, yeah. real estate sales. Um, there could be any variety, but I think it's you know plateauing. June generally is one of our biggest months for receiving sales tax, so it could just be you so, know lower lower sales within this year. I mean, it could be a variety. So, on so that figure is was just what part of our that was just one month. So one month, just June. Oh, yes, okay. yes, no, no, just June. <laughs> okay, no, that's. I mean, I was like, wait a second. So yeah, so down. last year was extremely inflated our sales tax, and you kind of figured that um, just due to you know COVID uh, restrictions opening back or less less restrictive. Um, so I don't know if you missed the part. It's only about seven point two percent down from twenty twenty, which again is when the rise of COVID actually was. Well, what about the total year? Year to date, we're only in. I mean, this report is for June for fiscal year that is our year to date. <laughs> so um, what about last year? Oh, January to May was. How did we do? I didn't, you know, calculate those. Uh, like I said, if June's kind of our largest <laughs> month of sales tax, it's really kind of hard to justify how the remainder of the year will be. Um, no, I meant past past year. I just want to see how it. Compares. I mean, I can get you those numbers. I yeah, just don't have them on hand. You know, sales well, tax is a major. 
my understanding is that by taking off the gas tax as a county, it may be influencing sales tax overall. On the flip side, don't forget, we had a full fare this go around. And while Saratoga retains a lot of their own uh, homemade sales tax, uh, the effect of having a full Saratoga season with full attendances, et cetera, should help the entire county with the residual uh, income that is made or revenues that are made in that situation. So I, I see, I think it's going to counterbalance at this point, if I had to guess, but we're keeping our eye on it. And so is the county. Yeah, I know. One thing that has happened or has happened over time and keeps happening is that we, our sales tax you know, tends to go up, but the increase is not the same as the increase in the surrounding towns. So our towns are saying, because they're adding to the tax base. Right, and we're not. That's essentially what it comes down and to. And so we get a smaller down. and smaller and smaller slice of the pie. Luckily, the pie is increasing, so our sales tax does decrease, but not at the same rate other towns do. And that's why Boston doesn't have a town tax. And Milton has a very small one, and the village has a larger one. So uh, one thing I want to point out, going back on something Julius report, uh, this is one of the most common issues I encounter as mayor with emails. Um, as you know, for instance, if you don't do a water read, uh, water meter read, it's a fifty dollar fine uh, that can be waived if it's your first offense in X number of years, uh, or something very unusual happens, you're away legitimately and just didn't have the ability. We will sometimes waive it if you write to me and request it. The one thing that can't be waived, though, is penalties in any case. So if there's a penalty on that meter read scenario, I cannot waive those, and we cannot waive those as a board. So please be aware, and I know it sounds funny the way that it's written, and I don't know if this was an oversight or what, but I have to play by the rules I'm given here, and the rules say penalties on fines are not waivable. So you may get that. $50 waived, but you didn't pay it for a certain period and there's a penalty assessed on it, then the penalty remains. And that's something that I know people have a tough time swallowing, but I have to assure them that's the way the code is. And this person sitting my right over here has uh, validated that for sure. So maybe someday we go back and change that. I don't know, but for now, that's the law. Is, is that something in our code that we've done or is that generally you can't wait? That's on? generally you can't wait. So it's not something we can, we can change. It's not. Okay. All right. That I think we right. to make that clear. Right. 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 Made it sound like that's well, it's, it's right. actually written in our code. In, in our code, and we can't. I, mean, we, I think we've got it in our code, and it's in state law. It's in state law. In other words, it's not us. It's state law that says mm -hmm. you get a penalty. You still got to pay it, even if it was some sort of misunderstanding or whatever. And it's pretty tough to swallow, but. The, the one thing I'll say uh, as an editorial point on this is if a, something didn't belong there in the first place, forcing a penalty on it is ridiculous. And I wish the state would fix that if that's the case, because that, that makes no sense. But it is what it is. Old business sidewalk code. Uh, ben, I, we sort of punted, punted on this. Uh, and Carla gave us assessments on. The legalities of who should be saying what, how, and that email not going to exhaust the crowd with. Uh, she gave advice uh, in either direction on that. So we're, I think, fine. And I didn't see any responses to that. So let's talk uh, the turkey of the sidewalk code itself and the things we need to sort of ask Carla to look at because she was asked, actually asking for that uh, Friday ish, basically, to see if there's something she could do over the weekend. Obviously, we didn't give her much. Uh, advance on that, but let's let's talk it out, get this down, and move it forward to the degree we can. Okay, so probably the biggest change slash improvement would be an increase in the reimbursement rate, and um, as has been done with water rates or other fees, um, the idea of taking it out of the code so we don't have to change the law every time we change it, and putting in a fee schedule and just referencing that from the code, but. Um, we put some numbers here for your consideration just as a starting point to think about um, the current rate for for concrete sidewalk is roughly $16 per square foot. And um, if we currently 
the reimbursement rate from the village is two dollars fifty cents per square foot. And um, so what I'm suggesting, and again, this is totally just putting that there as a starting point, is maybe uh, increasing that to six dollars per square foot. So that's about thirty eight percent of the current cost. So still going to cost homeowners a good amount of money um, to fix, but uh, maybe this will help uh, make it possible so that um, sidewalk repair happens a little more quickly. Um, there's some other numbers in here. One thing we are, are um, I'm suggesting is um, that the $6 is for, say, owner-occupied, not to exceed three units and nonprofits, and that other property, which are more commercial, be reimbursed at a lower rate because they can get tax uh, write-offs. Um, so with the tax write-offs, you can, um, if, it, if they got reimbursed about $3 per square foot, they'd actually more or less equal the $6 per square foot of people who can't write it off their taxes. So that's something, again, just uh, something to throw out there. Um, there's also something- Can, I, the, can I stop for one second? Yeah, go ahead. I, Christine from BSBPA is here. Could you get some assessment from the business folks on what they think of that? Because I know that'll be a controversial thing ultimately. It'd be good to get a buy in or a discussion point. I guess the question ultimately is if there's no incentive to go and install your own sidewalk or to fix your own sidewalk, ultimately, are you going to do it or are you going to just say, hey, village, go ahead and do it yourself because it's the same penalty or price anyway, ultimately, and still could be written off probably on their taxes the way we've been suggesting? So I'm just curious to see, would it have a chilling effect on businesses actually going out and doing it themselves? Yeah. I mean, at some point it's an enforcement issue. Like people were saying at the last meeting, if the sidewalks are bad, it's not an option not to fix them. You're supposed to fix them, but um, yes, we want to, if we can afford it, but um, if we have to target our resources, makes sense, you know, people who can get the tax write off don't, are getting um, some support that way, whereas other people aren't. So. The matter of how we have no idea what the voluntary response will be to this, and you know, so this is the carrot, and then the other piece is how how active are we going to be to actively, uh, you know, enforce uh, that sidewalk repair. Just so. as a point, the two fifty I think was determined of like twenty years ago. That's when it was set. When it was originally this law was drafted, it equaled about fifty percent of the cost. Which is the legal limit that the village can apply for an individual homeowner? So it used to be 250 was 50 percent, you know, probably about 20, 25 years ago, and it never changed up till now. So well, we're not going up to 50 percent, and what's been suggested, but trying to make it a little bit easier for for folks to to be able to, you know. Repair and replace. So this, this is sort of halfway between 250, which is roughly 15 percent or so of current cost, and the 50 percent. Again, not knowing exactly what the expense will be to the village. The other piece is curb repair, which also is a 250 per linear foot. Um, Sean, our expert road guy. Um, <laughs> Hi, excellent road guy. How are you doing? It's actually an invitation yeah, here. I'll answer to him. <laughs> he, uh, but he, he has costs that uh, he's able to find for us. And um, so that's actually $21 per linear foot to be, which is 38% of um, the total cost. So that's actually more expensive. But that's only for. Uh, so, Curves that a lot right sidewalk. only from, so like businesses in downtown you have a huge sidewalks that go right to the street then you're responsible but if you have a sidewalk where there's a grassy area between your sidewalk and the street that's the village that has to deal with that curve um, the other piece of this that I'm suggesting is um, that the maximum uh, that we support is a hundred uh, feet of or a hundred linear feet of sidewalk or 500 square feet of sidewalk uh, just to put a top end on it, um, and um, because again, we don't know what the budget will look like. Um, the uh, we also are suggesting you know allow up to one year to replace or repair sidewalk rather than 30 days. Right now it's 30 days, which is really not feasible. 
to get a quote and get it done. Uh, I'd be careful there if, yeah. if we're in a situation like Front Street, if we ever do Front Street and we need uh, participation by business owners or uh, building owners there, we can't wait for a year for them to do it. We've got to get them all in sync in a situation like that. So it's something to consider. I get where you're going with it, but maybe we think about our timing on doing something like that when we know a project like that is upcoming. All right. Yeah, I mean, we can have language that talks about different scenarios, uh, but 30 days is really bad enough, I yeah. think, in most situations. It take, it take you twice that to get contractors to give you yeah. the price, never mind schedule the work. I think maybe the question of when you start that 30 day clock is probably a question maybe that we could fix ultimately to still have some control over that situation. But let's, oh. we won't get lost in that, but Carl is taking diligent notes on this also. So she's making sure that she's got all this down. And the other, and, well, and I also I sent, you, I sent you the blog. I sent you the blog. Point too, uh, I know, that's why I'm not actually taking the notes. I, I looked at my right, she didn't have her pen or her hand. I'm like, yeah, I just pulled the biggest lie in my life. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and then, copious, copious notes. Sorry, sorry, Ben. Go ahead. Oh, and then the current law does not cover repair at all. So we're talking about, again, sort of pulling it out of the hat, $3 per square foot for sidewalk repair, not to see $1,500, which is 100 or 500 square feet of property, 100 linear feet. So um, so that, so again, sidewalk repair, repair is not in the current zone code, so this would be a big improvement on that. Um, hopefully that'll help. And then just the bullet saying that new sidewalk construction needs to be, you know, ADA and DOT compliant. So that's five feet wide. And I guess there's other standards with depth and, and materials and things like that. You should just um, say ADA, not put the number. Which is what we do with our sidewalk. That way we uh, have to okay. change dining, voted sidewalk right. sales. Uh, Carla? But uh, well, I think the, the, do this. the DOT standards, ADA doesn't talk about how the Sidewalk is constructed. That's why John right, yeah, suggested. Right, yeah. Nice stock standards and specifications actually describe. Right. I was saying, mm -hmm. don't put a number. Oh no. Yeah. Don't yeah, put no, the no. five feet. Yeah. Right. Then <laughs> there was that other issue about grants and okay, everything yeah. into that, um, which I. Don't know what we want to do language if, Yeah, I mean, let me take the floor back for a second. I'll yeah. go through a few things here, if that's okay. Hey, expert guy. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, one of the things I said last time, I just haven't had time to investigate. I'm thinking you maybe have the best methods uh, or could recommend who internally should probably do it is I would like to see the same thing we would do in an RFP type approach or uh, procurement approach is to get maybe three sets of estimates for the specs we require. Uh, for sidewalking and prefer just to see what the number is uh, overall so that we can work it backwards and figure out what everything should look like if what Ben is proposing is sound with realities. And I know he just did his sidewalk, so that could be one set, sure. Uh, the DOT specs, I don't know if they're prevailing wage or they're not and how that works, but I'm sure there are people we can get numbers from ultimately that, that would verify it. Do you think it's a DPW type chore or what do you think? I mean, I can... I can pull up the the specification standards. There's standard sheets that show, you know, how it's supposed to be built, um, and then turn to the contractors locally to see right. sample. Yeah, I mean, the numbers we came up are from New York State DOT weighted bid price averages for Region One, which is our region. Um, now, obviously, they they vary by project, so. It's an average. Sometimes they're lower, sometimes they're higher. And you know, I would reach out to you know local contractors because you may get a better price. So well, also the I mean the DOT is are generally large contracts, large amounts, high volume yeah, is yeah. lower, but it turns out to be the feet, same, so. same no. yeah. cost per square foot. So I, I think we kind of have an idea that we should verify these figures that uh, we're looking at and making sure we're budgeting correctly too in the future as well. Sure. But one of the things is pulling out of the code the specific dollar amount and putting it into the fee schedule or payment schedule in this case, uh, so that when we do want to make changes to it, we don't have to amend code. Well, FYI for everybody, every time we change code, it costs us over $300 because 
ECO360, which is the online resource we put our code in, charges us that much to input the local law changes into their e-code ultimately. So you may think it doesn't cost as much, but it costs us at least $300 per code change just for e-code. So this is why taking things out of there that we don't need to have in there, but we need to change from time to time is important. Um, I'd just like to, to say that I'm going to recruit myself from any scholar discussion. Okay. I think I can comment on the, the structure of the law. So. Thank you. Um, legality of commercial is also going to be checked by Carla. She was whispering in my ear that she wasn't sure exactly what the legality is. She's going to check that. Uh, with respect to grants, we've brought this up a few times, and uh, I'll say it again just to be, uh, I guess, comprehensive here. Uh, we can't currently give grant money for sidewalks to members of the community because th it is their responsibility to replace, repair, maintain their sidewalks. And as such, if we give them grant money, we are giving them a gift, which we cannot do legally. So we have to basically revise our approach on that in our code to make that not the case and make us able to accept grant money in that type of uh, scenario. And one thing I also kind of wanted to see what we can do is in actual cases of emergency, what we do, you know, especially when landowners can't be found and everything else, to have a little bit more ability to do what we have to do to take care of safety issues, uh, short of you know hoping we can find you know the owner and everything else to avoid this whole gift toll that may exist. Only in cases of emergency like that, I think we we kind of have over legislated ourselves in the current code version where we can't necessarily do what we need to do all the time because of it. So also, that's the last thing for me. Go ahead. Are we going to have something in there since? I presume, you know, going back to Larry Wilbright, he was talking about the sidewalk and that he was not enforcing because we were changing the sidewalk code. But I assume we'll be enforcing um, the code once we do this. And, um, you know, is there language in there? I'm trying to remember that if a person is cited that they have a broken sidewalk, et cetera, and that they need to repair it and they don't, then DPW comes in and does the work? Is that the way it's well stated? Yeah. And then they get billed for it? I have the yes. language here. Okay. I, I think one of the vexing issues right now is that Babel Fountain works a certain number of hours and we have uh, some backup code enforcement that occurs with the system we have set up. But if we're going to keep adding to literal code enforcement that's going to occur, we have to be mindful of it and really start planning on that end of things too for the future as well. You know, Bob, uh, you know, it will only be around for so long to uh, back us up, uh, hopefully for another couple of decades. Uh, but don't tell Mary I said that. But nonetheless, you get my point that we imposing code enforcement and following up on it to a certain degree it takes time, takes effort, and we have to make, make sure we have. The right manpower to do it because I think Dave is kind of settled in and around this number of hours. Maybe we can convince him for a few more here and there. Yeah. But uh, let's let's make sure that we're covering that back. We can't just assume, oh, we're going to go to code enforcement and then there's nobody there for it. Right. Just to let you know, it, the, your code right now says it's the mayor and the board of trustees that is in charge of notifying and the enforcement. Yeah, but can't wait to knock on those doors for that one. I <laughs> think the building inspector to make sure. Sure. Determination. Code enforcement. Uh, yeah. But it doesn't say that. That's what I think. It says that in other oh. sections of the code that the building inspector makes it. In this, it specifically says, in the opinion of the mayor and board of trustees, it's deemed unsafe. Do so, we want to change so that? Maybe? Building, Sean, knock <laughs> on some doors for us, expert. <laughs> I'll take the southeast one. Yeah. Yeah. That's dealing with every sidewalk. I think well, it would be a little bit. Bob wants to give some input back there. I think it's fair. You, you, you can right now. Go ahead. It's relevant. It's, yeah. I just want to remind everybody. The last snowfall last year, which is we enforce it, none of it ever got enforced to the point where the people were fired. None. We ran around, spent the day, got the letters, got all the postings. By the time it was done, the snow was melted, no bills were done. So the we enforce it, but doesn't have one. We better find a different tool. Point taken. 
I mean, just just because it doesn't say the building inspector brings it to our attention doesn't mean you can't have it that way, right? Well, and then we ultimately have to say, yes, we agree. Well, generally speaking, you don't have that authority. That's always on the building inspector. Oh, this okay. one has you having that authority. So if you want me to change that, I would change that. Because, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's. That's something that isn't. Yeah. You know? Do you know why they may have done it this way? Is it because it's a large bill? No idea. I think I think it's an archaic scenario. I'll be honest with you. Judge whether the sidewalk is now we need somebody. It was 1970. It was before I was born. <laughs> and me too. <laughs> Hand off. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, we will. We'll move to B. How's that? Is that we doing this for now? Carla's going to do her thing, and then next week, next, next week, meeting. we'll flush yes, we'll, it out. And, and she'll keep us posted on where she gets with it, and hopefully next meeting, if yeah. not, we'll and know this, where we are. Just to let everyone know what the enforcement was, it says, upon failure of any adjacent landowner, place or appear to affect the unsafe sidewalk or curbing within 30 days, which was not changing, a receipt of a written notice pursuant to subsection B. The village of Ballspot shall replace or repair any such sidewalk and their curbing and the cost thereof shall be added to the next succeeding village tax bill. And the same shall be a charge upon and lien said upon said adjacent real property. So that's the important piece. Chris, do you have a meeting between now and the next meeting of uh, the village court uh, for the SBPA by any chance? When's your next meeting, Fisher? Okay. The third Monday of August. So we'll at least, there's nothing we can, it's, it's a law change. So there's a lot of input time. So if you want to informally, uh, you know, get the consensus and then maybe at your board meeting, talk about it, just to give us some feedback, that'd be great. We really appreciate that. It is at least from where it is now. So it's some benefit, but it's not as much as for owner occupied. And not a maybe I can get more detail. Specifically about this afternoon. Sure, absolutely. Reach out. We'll, we'll get you where we can. Actually, the sidewalks in front of most of our businesses are not in that shape. It's more the residential streets where we have the issue. ADA and EOT do provide guidance as to what the maximum appeal in between sidewalk panels can be in grades and whatnot. Oh. So that may be a way to determine whether the sidewalk needs to be repaired. So we'll, uh, we'll, we've got more to come on that, but I think we'll leave that for now. Uh, PDD workshop date and who to invite. I just wanted to, I, I really have not had time to follow up uh, with all of you about setting a workshop. I figured uh, by the time I was going to do a Friday or Thursday of last week, it might as well just ask you here, is there a date that would mutually work date and time? And should we invite the planning board as a whole to have a uh, dual meeting, basically? of uh, the planning board and the village board to hatch out some ideas of where to make changes ultimately on it. I think we can take this discussion, you know, have it as to, I mean, if we want to set a date now, but then everybody's going to be playing around with the calendars, why don't we table this and, and work via email to find a date that works for all of us. To agree on how the meeting's going to be structured. Well, let me ask you: Do we have vacations coming up? Anybody uh, just to maybe I'll propose a date or two, and then we'll go from there. Well, why don't we just do it over here? There was already some mistake. Oh, hold on, Bernard would like to say something. I, I would like to say you did ask a question. I would like to say well. Okay, that helps me at least know who to reach out to overall, if yeah. that's okay. Just give us. We'll do it on email. This, this is one of the things I think Bob Bush, number of meetings ago, said, you know, can't you work this out? Offline because it's not something that we need to take okay. up. Okay. I, I, I'm fine with that, but I, at least yeah, we'll yeah that, that's the challenge is you we have to set, set the, the meeting. meeting. You can set the meeting as that works. No, but taking the time to do it. Right. What, what she's saying is that if we're going to do it between now and the next board meeting, we actually have to set it as a meeting. Yeah. Because, because of notice. Oh, well, can it be after the next meeting? It could be, I, I guess, uh, next meeting being the, the 7th, 9th, 8th, 8th, so yeah, then I'm here until 17th, basically, the 20th, that's the only time I'm away, I think, next month, so. I mean, if we want to set the time, the date, let's do it. First week? Okay. Not, not the first, second week. Second week, okay, so. We pop this up. Real quickly here, I will suggest 
Um, August 4th is a Thursday. Is comprehensive plan meeting that week or next week? I always forget. Nice social. Canada. Third? You can't do it. Third, second. August 2nd. Second. Is it going to be. Gotcha. What about the ninth or Tuesday? What about Monday? You can't do the second week either. Monday the first. I, I could. I could. Monday the first. Monday the first. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, I'll work with Rory to see what his uh, board is for now. We'll work on August 1st. Yeah, it's next week. Yep. Is that okay? Time for me. Do you, do you have more hours? No, more hours Tuesdays. Gotcha. Okay. So, August 1st, we'll set as a meeting. Uh, can I get a motion to set a special meeting of the Village Board of Trustees and the Planning Board of Village of Belson Spa? At 7 p.m. in the basement of the Village Public Library. I will make that motion. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Trustee Fundenza, <laughs> Trustee Carlos, in the second discussion. We haven't determined exactly what the plan board will be. We can work that out. Yeah, in a way, I think that will manage it and have a good conversation at the very least. So you can give me a few days you know, to uh, jump on that, I guess. Any other discussion? All, yeah. Anybody in the audience with any uh, public comment on this and only this? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Special meeting uh, will occur on August 1st. Thank you. 7 p.m. Yeah. yeah. If the planning board can't come, I'll advise you as soon as possible. Rory was here. Oh, no, Rory's here. Yeah, there he is. Oh, he's hiding back. I, yeah, you really are hiding. I could. I had to. I spoke the whole meeting up front last night, Frank. I thought I was looking at it. Is August 1st uh, for you at least? And can you confirm with your board? I can make that work. I'll check with everyone Thank you. And if they can't, just let us know. We'll we'll figure this out. Okay, at least we got uh, somewhere to start. New business. Park rules and regulations, other park code issues, and security cameras. Let me work back, uh, forward back here a little bit. Security cameras has become an issue with respect to our parks uh, because of graffiti issues, uh, damage issues generally, and some other things that I'll discuss in a little bit. Uh, we have a motion that is on the agenda for about $5,000 and change, I think $5,500 actually, uh, for cameras and related items for Kelly Park. Uh, we did have Aaron Springs, the building uh, with graffiti on it that uh, Bob over at the Lions and Dana Womer had uh, found. And Dana, in her email to me, identified that her husband Dave actually has an old security camera and DVR that he can give to the village to set up at Iron Springs Park. So first off, uh, I think unless somebody has some objection to that, I'm going to take him up on that offer or with DPW to get that installed. So thank you. Dave uh, for that offer and to Dana for conveying it to us. We noticed that parks are just having some issues with loitering and general conduct at times. And in looking at these situations, a couple of things became clear. First off, at Kelly Park, the pavilion area sort of invites a little bit of a loiter feel to it because we have power in the pavilion. So I have asked DPW for the time being to shut off the power unless somebody requests for their event, et cetera, power to be turned on. Uh, we don't want people that rent out or you know, schedule the use of the pavilion to feel like they don't have the use of the pavilion for the fact that other people are saying or laying claim to being in there. Uh, the general idea here is to let them use it without interruption or problems. So that much we're doing for now to see how it works, and we'll revisit it if it's that a problem. Lighting? You're turning on? No, it's it's the actual power ports in the uh, pavilion. All around it, there are plugs, and I noticed that when we did the playground, actually, I hadn't really realized how many there are. But folks are actually going in there with their computers and cell phones for a long time to charge up, use our electricity, and running up, running us up a bill in the process of also causing some uh, problems from time to time for us. 
But we also recognized, uh, Terry, Carl, and I on a call one day that we have no code with uh, rules and regulations for parks, except for the state park, which doesn't exist currently, or at least isn't actively used. And so we turned to Carla and I'll give her uh, the floor here because she sent me something today about her research and where maybe we go with this. So when we were on the phone, I was looking up your codes and as the mayor said, you have one part of your code about Wiswell Park and that's only to animals. And then you have a skateboard park. And I said, where's the skateboard park? And I was told, we don't have one. Well, you have a law about one. Um, one of the things so we started looking at other communities around us, Milton, Walton, Moreau, Southwest Falls, Corinth, um, you know, all over, villages all over, to try and get a good law for you folks to have. One of the things we talked about, and I, I, the trustees are aware of all this because we had email conversations, <clears throat> is that, you know, just a sign saying rules and regulations of the park, like pick up after yourself. Uh, you know, it's, it's sad you have to put this on a sign, but um, no loitering, uh, things of that nature, um, no vehicles in the park. There's no, these are things that you could just put on a sign, and I don't know, I'm just throwing that out there, it's a big lavender park, but um, to put it in a code and just that, that way the code is there and it says these are your rules and regulations, but also, you know, you're kind of there at your own risk if you get yourself, if you get hurt, you get hurt, things of that nature that are in a lot of different codes. Um, I know the, the mayor um, uh, looked at the Milton one and I know uh, it was brought up at least at the Park and Tree Board uh, that we are gonna look at this because we wanna work in conjunction with them to do this. So because I'm a glut for punishment, I said, let's make another law. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Carla. <laughs> uh, but I do think, you know, because there were concerns, the, you, there were issues in the parks, and I looked to your code, and there's no way to deal with those issues. There's no enforcement, you know, to, to your point about non enforcement. Um, so I found a, a nice one down on um, the village of Rye, um, Rye something, Rye Brook. Rye Brook. And um, that one combined with Milton, and we can tailor it to the village here. I think that would work well. I'll send that to all the trustees as well. Um, but that's kind of where this all started. That I got the phone call that, hey, what do we do about X, Y, and Z in the park? Well, let me see. Well, you do nothing. So that's that's where we are. And again, we're not trying to over legislate our parks, but we're, we're trying to basically make sure that when people are doing things that don't reach the level of absolute law breaking that, that any tickets that are issued have teeth to them or that people that come in know ahead of time that it's not going to be tolerated and that they were at risk to get ticketed for certain conduct so i think it's worth doing makes it clear gives anybody that has to go to court on our behalf uh some ability to make this real and gives the judges the ability to say yes the ticket's legit and we need to uh pay it and it needs to be enforced so that's where we're going with that this is going to take a little time uh, perhaps we get signs once we reach a code that we are in agreement with. Uh, in the meantime, while we try to you know, get it passed as a law, get signs up to at least tell people, here's where we're landing on this anyway. And then the code itself, itself will get passed over the next couple of months. Uh, that's just the slow process of lawmaking. So you want to put signs up before the... Well, we can come to a consensus as a group. I think it, we can begin creating the signs, work with Jennifer, to get those signs created and not risk too much money in the process of doing one, that. One thing I asked Parks and the Tree, Parks and Tree Board uh, is to think about, like I shared, the, the Milton, which is very, mm -hmm. like, activities that are restricted, mm -hmm. regulated, prohibited, three pages. Sometimes that's, that's good, though. It's easier to cross it out than write it in. But how to translate that to a sign? What are the key things? So anyway, they're a resource mm -hmm. for us. So. Absolutely. So, well, sort of the timing in the next two weeks, you'll be sending us stuff, um, and we may deal with it at the next meeting or the following meeting. If, if, if I can, if I can get it to you for the next meeting, that would be my goal. Okay, and then we could discuss it again via email, and then have some consensus and say this right. is what we have for. Yep, that's what uh, my view is. And uh, again, thanks to Carla. And uh, to Terry as well, because Terry had some great input on this whole situation. She's the one that has to field the calls. So it's not just me. Ray, uh, go ahead. Yeah, from the park and tree board. Um, could those be sent to us also? Absolutely. So we have some idea what we're working with. Well, it's just, the, uh, right now, it's just codes that are already out there. Right. right. 
Just so they'll look through us and see if yeah. you have any ideas. Sure. And one of the things that was brought up in the meeting has been said is we don't want it to be no, 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 we can't do this, no, 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 but have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's more it just takes away from right. Yeah. Yep. Just the, the board. Apparently, you never grew up in an Italian family. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, that's where we're going uh, with respect to that. I want to read uh, a letter uh, for New Business B that I wrote to Ed Martin today. Uh, we packaged together and I actually found a couple extras and I got a new one uh, today that I've not circulated yet in terms of community emails, responses related to our discussion on Malta Avenue street safety uh, and High Boulevard, et cetera. Uh, it reads as follows. Dear Ed, thank you again for joining me during our Malta Avenue School Street Safety Discussion on Wednesday, July 13th. The feedback we received during and since that event has been extremely positive, reflecting a productivity about which village residents are excited. As I suggested, I'm providing you with a number of resources from that discussion, including unofficial minutes, thanks to Jennifer, reflecting the topics discussed and issues presented by participants, Comments from our Facebook Live simulcast, most of which were received during the actual live event, emails and messages received prior to the event, and emails and messages received after the discussion. From the discussion, I can see some definite lower costs and easily executed items that the school district and the village can work to make happen. For instance, crosswalks and painted bump outs seem to be very popular items, with crosswalks being desired on streets we might not have considered previously, for instance, one connecting to Ralph Street. Better truck prohibition signs are seen as clearly needing improvement. The potential for your speed is signs has consistently been mentioned before, during, and after the discussion. Sidewalk continuation to the school district soccer fields on High Boulevard and potentially a more efficient parking approach are definitely embraced during and after the discussion. On the other hand, it is clear that more permanent measures like speed bumps, humps, or dips need more examination based on the split in opinions on such changes. Similarly, a drop in speed limit needs to be examined, especially with respect to the new state law concerning 25 mile per hour speed limit allowances for villages in New York State. I plan on discussing some of these issues and items with our village board at our meeting tonight, and I am seeing them and this correspondence and package communications. If we choose to pursue some of the items above, I will let you know so that we can examine how, best, how to best undertake them at the most efficient pricing possible and or in ways that the school district might be able to assist us in a legally acceptable manner. And thank you for all your time and effort related to these safety issues. Community's appreciation should tell all of us how cooperation in this manner is something positive for the area. I'll speak further with you soon, sincerely. Thank you. So uh, we got a couple options here and I know I got these out to you late, but it's just been hellacious the last week or so trying to get the stuff out. But, I am, today. I am aware. So what I was about to suggest is that when we meet next Monday, we could add this to an agenda of uh, things to talk about as well, besides the uh, PDD, it, just to knock that out as well. Well, that's I, I think too much. Too much. Uh, Why don't we just do it the next board meeting? Because they would like to make some changes before the school year starts, and we're kind of getting to that point now. Well, I mean, you the one... One of the problems I had, you know, we got a lot of great feedback, but that July 13th meeting was a bit of a mess with the code and a lot of people couldn't respond. Um, and also there was restricted attendance and that included, um, you know, I was quote, allowed to attend because I live on High Boulevard and have for nine years, but the fact that the other board members, particularly Sean was restricted from attending where he's a transportation engineer and can provide a lot of, of sound data on some of these solutions. I mean, it's great to ask the residents, what do you like? But as a resident, they don't know what the data has shown works. And you know, they, they, maybe if the data show that speed bumps is the most effective, and they say, no, we don't want that, that's important. But if there are, you know, and there was the, the, the pedestrian and bicycle master plan, which laid out, you know, the steps where the, the, the most critical issues were, like the intersections at the end um, at Malta. That was like number one to improve that intersection. So I think that was done with a traffic transportation engineering firm. I think that needs to be, you know, we need a, a basically if we're going to 
spend money on solutions, we need that it's backed up with some data, with some knowledge, not just what do you want? That's my feeling. So with all due respect, Liz, you kind of contradict yourself because you did break the news that there were 44 pages worth of emails and discussion that were handed over today. And it took a while to collect it all because it was spread over many different types of resources, emails, messages, uh, Facebook comments, et cetera, and minutes as well that were put together from that. So anybody and everybody that had comments to make on the situation are being heard and still being heard. I'd like to say no, I received something I today. I have no problem with reaching out to people for their comments, but people that didn't live in the area that have very similar problems were allowed into this meeting. And John, Ben, and Bernadette. I, I observed that. I, I watched online. And yeah, I, I but you that. weren't allowed to, to participate. Oh, she's actually, and actually I, I took the opportunity to chat with people on Facebook, and they had a lot of wonderful suggestions that we could put, get some data on from the engineers. But um, I mean, this is something that I'm not saying that the feedback wasn't valuable. It was. Okay. I was saying the structure of that meeting was I was problematic. I listen, it, we can rehash this over and over again. You said this last time. I, I think honestly, a lot of residents thought it was a productive meeting. I thought it was a productive meeting. We have something to go to our engineers. Here are some of the, the buy-in from the community. What, you know, yeah. we have to, we had to, I think there was some discussion of maybe getting a different type of speak, uh, <clears throat> traffic study to figure out what the actual speed is because I right. think it was on the one end, right? If you if from the pedestrian the, the, the study. One we, yeah, could have and I'm not sure that it's capturing that middle area because that's people people I have observed, people start flying from the get-go, but in the middle ground people start picking up again. So I again not an engineer but from an observer <laughs> a person who drives that every day and a lot of the residents have said there there's they're speeding. I'm not sure that we're completely capturing. So yes, I think, but we need to start talking about it. We need to, um, you know, we, we see a lot of uh, really great input. We see some buy-in buy -in from some of these solutions. I, I don't know why we can't start talking about it and, and, and looping our engineering in on this. You well, know? that's not the, our engineer is not a transportation engineer, right? Or a engineer. And the yeah. point is, the, well, the village engineer does subcontract um, with a traffic engineer consultant. Okay. Yeah, because Eric is on um, uh, the talk about the stop sign. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and, and and I thought you know your frankly newfound interest in pedestrian safety because newfound. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. Um. You know, I did. It, it, you know, I I live there. I've lived there for nine years. I've seen. Like yeah, I'm a all. cyclist and a pedestrian yeah. and trying to ride there, so I don't think you anybody's know. just really interested in but, this. But, you know, I, I hope your interest in this doesn't, you know, describe well, from some of the, to. excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry, I think your comments unfounded. You're all coming to the table discussing this, so I, I think that comment's unfounded. Uh, can I finish? Let's can on. I finish Liz? If you're going to insist on saying that people dead. are not interested, in pedestrian safety, I think that's un I think I'm that's completely unfounded. One at a time, folks. I was speaking and you Judge? interrupted. And I let's, honestly think let's not get caught saying. up in you speaking first and how. Let's be respectful to each other, including me. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, with respect to I, the fact that we've all had pedestrian safety concerns from the day we've been born in this uh, area or nearly born in this area. So I don't think that's appropriate and necessary in this. We all want to make sure this gets done. I just want to make sure it gets can, done with the school district's cooperation can, for the school year. Now, go can ahead, I finish? Liz, I started talking. Yeah. She interrupted. Liz, and you're, you, and you're in, in, you your, in your filibustering right now, Liz. So go ahead and finish your filibustering. I, I find it highly disrespectful for both of you to interrupt when I am making a statement. Because, okay, you're, uh, okay. Sure, but you know what I find incredibly disrespectful is when make unfounded statements. And I apologize that I interrupted him, but I'm not going to let things like that slide sometimes. I appreciate what you're saying, and yes, you are a resident over there, but come on, we are trying to work together. And I apologize that you think I've overstepped in your comments, but I, I just, 
I'm kind of tired of it. And I think residents are tired of it. So, I mean, let's move forward. I'd like to see some work on this and some actual I conversation. I've been devoting a good part of the last three and a half years on this issue. Then why are there still issues? Right. <laughs> <Why> <laughs> because we didn't have the money to put into the solutions. We have the solutions based on the pedestrian and bicycle mass. These solutions have cost $20,000 at most. The ones that I, I just highlighted, maybe and less. The and the school districts only pay for some of them. Go ahead. Again, you interrupt. That study has short-term affordable suggestions. I think the input from, from the residents in the area it's valuable, very valuable. I have a problem with the way you conducted that meeting. Also, there are residents who have emailed me chiding, thinking that I sponsored this event, saying, why are you concentrating on high boulevard? They're, they're, they're thinking mm -hmm. that you're playing favorites with somebody because you know the board member lives on high boulevard and you're focusing on high boulevard. So there are other streets that needs to be a little bit broader. And yeah, do I want to see High Boulevard? Yeah, I'm at the stretch where they come speeding by. But I want us to look at that study, which was done by a transportation engineer, take the comments, have Sean as, as our in-house expert comment. And then, you know, if you think we need the transportation engineer to work with us and, and recraft solutions when we've already done it. Um, so we, that's all I have to say. Thank, Thank you. Okay. So I think everybody to a man right now or a woman can sit here and say the following. We need to repaint our crosswalks on High Boulevard. Yay or nay? Yes. Yes. I think everybody here would say that your speed is signs do not influence adversely your street. And if the school district's willing to pay for them, they don't adversely get our budget. Can they pay for them? Yes. Because they're not supposed to make it. It's their, it's gonna be their property ultimately. They can hang them on our uh, poles. We can allow them to hang on our poles. It's not our property and they're not improving our property per se. But they're the school, the school will remain there. Yes. But they're addressing our traffic. They're addressing everybody's traffic issues and safety issues ultimately. So their lawyers, let's work with their lawyers and it's still the okay. list of do's That's and fine. don'ts. Yep. I think that the concept of bump outs to protect crosswalks somewhat is something that was wildly popular from people that spoke at that meeting that are most affected by what happens on that street. It's something that can be done if we just use paint for now to see how they work and maybe signs to see, uh, force people out of there to honor it would be something to look at as well. I, there was a, a comment, I think it's the last page actually what I sent today uh, before I sent the other, other ones uh, to address your question of playing favorites or not. Somebody who was actually very anti me, I think during the campaign, which is whatever, I. I love everybody in this village and I really don't care who was for or against me. I was very heartened by this paragraph. I like to read it out of respect. Adam Woodard had written, Mr. Mayor, I admit I had my doubts about you when you ran and was at times vocal about my distrust of your motives via Facebook. So far, I am pleasantly surprised and I do apologize for not giving you the benefit of the doubt during your campaign. I'm encouraged by a lot of the discussion regarding traffic and pedestrian safety and I like the idea of speed bumps on high. I hope the same level of attention can be given to other streets throughout the village. My street, West Street in particular, sees an inordinate amount of motorists speeding and a relatively high volume of traffic for a side street. My response to Adam was, thank you, first off, obviously, but also one of the reasons we focus on Hyde is because we've been focusing on Hyde for three and a half years, and until we get something done there, it's going to be that albatross around our neck that we need to keep looking at and keep looking at and that won't allow us to go to the other streets in our community and make fixes in those streets. So by all means, yes, we do need to look at other streets and making this another five month long waltz 
is not going to allow us to do it. It's going to basically get us entrenched further while the school district kind of sits there and says, hey, uh, about these changes that would help everybody and their safety, what's going on? I think that's why the only thing that's newfound, I think, here is that the guy sitting in the mayor's seat right now is looking for an urgency here from everybody on this board to get something done and maybe some more permanent things done later. The speed bumps idea, I think, is a much more permanent thing that we have to really examine and get some more information even from the resident side. I don't apologize for how that meeting was conducted or discussion was, discussion was conducted because we filled 75 minutes in an hour long discussion without any breaks in it, reading emails, hearing comments, et cetera. So even if there were additional people in that meeting, I don't know what we would have heard at that point because we filled the entire time and done some thanks to Ed for staying past the hour. So that's my thoughts. Actually, if Bernie that, Bernie that, I think it's fair now for you to talk. Do you have anything else you wanted to say when you were cut off? I would really love to move forward. I mean, the city of Albany, um, when they rejiggered uh, Washington Avenue, for example, they are blocked in Washington, I think it was. They did test out the bump outs with paint, um, you know, before they did any, um, but before they, they invested the, the asphalt. The cement. They did the paint, and they they found that it was successful and, and really helped. So I mean, what are they called curb extensions? Is that the other terminology? I think um, they're called bump out curb extensions. What what you're talking about is they they say a flush curb extension. It's it's painted and get the end. Lake George is a great example. They have those. Um, having worked with DPW. The reason they go to a raise median is because they have limited efficacy. Usually after about two or three years, the local recognize that it's not a raise bin and just drive over them anyways. <laughs> so they have but a temporary basis, uh, at least right, it, or something. Yeah, until people get used to it. And obviously during snow and ice, when they're covered up, they're meaningless. So um, if, if they were truly effective, then they wouldn't spent the extra money to make the raise to pump out. They, they are kind of one of those things to get people kind of used to the idea while you find the money. And it was received well, uh, from my foot, I can recall. I think right. that was like 20 years ago. Well, gosh, probably not longer that was because COVID is like a, a time suck, you know. Um, but I mean, I, I think they're saying we can just consider and work with the school, you know, the school district actually be eager to do. I mean, there's a lot of kids that walk around there, and um, I, I would rather move forward and, and continue the session rather than pause, just because. I, I, I'm not saying pause, I'm saying continue. I'm just oh, saying well, that we need schedule a nice meeting. We need to have some data such that we can, you know, maybe do a traffic count. Uh, you know, do a monitoring count on on I don't the see, other end. I don't see and how that does, it does can, anything there. No, I'm saying again, you interrupt every time. Right? Please, I'm, I'm just saying, saying I, I can't see how doing a traffic count affects a bump out or not. That's a pedestrian safety question. I'm saying if we measure if we're effective, in other words, have some of the residents count the number of trucks, see if that helps. You know, I, I don't see an issue with throwing paint on the road. Right. Um, I think if you're going to prioritize it, I would repaint the crosswalks, make sure that you're using reflective, uh, reflective epoxy, yeah, because it's got durability, and also um, follow the governor's uh, traffic safety committee pedestrian safety action plan, which has enhanced signage. Um, I can I can provide the details. I was the project Please coordinator see. for Region One's yeah. PSAP yeah. initiative, so I can I can provide those um, details to the school. Because yeah. when you talk crosswalks, what we've got currently on high the two thin lines that go across, which have faded out, but two thin lines, no one pays attention to. Mm -hmm. So you know we should follow what's been proven for. I, I think that if nothing else from that meeting, the word crosswalk was probably the most frequently uttered word in the uh, 
emails and the uh, live reactions uh, during the pandemic. I don't get it. But I mean, we're getting out the epoxy paint. There, um, the crosswalk on Boston Ave is the way it's very worn out, as is the West Ave, West High. Uh, I'm just waiting to hear a little bit more from DOT on that intersection, especially about what what is going to happen there, because I did follow up with them on that. I'm glad you brought that up, actually. And they are still finalizing some information for us as to what to do with respect to safety and in general at that intersection right now. You mean West High or High in Boston? Yeah, or, or Boston. Boston. Oh, okay. I was talking. Oh, about you're the talking the other one. Morning. Sorry, good. Morning. You said. Yeah. Morning. Uh, there's that uh, mm -hmm. crosswalk. That's totally worn out too. Yeah. But anyway, but um, that's a good idea. Yeah, by all means. So I applaud your uh, initiative and the energy and uh, getting the stuff done. So that's great. And uh, a lot of what happens don't happen, doesn't happen, is what the mayor, frankly, decides to focus on or not focus on because a lot of it is just dependent on uh, you moving things along. You know, one of us can't move things along the way we can. So uh, I think this is a good area to move things along. Uh, it does seem like the history of it has been uh, submerged a little bit. I'm, I'm not comfortable with how the last meeting was done. It seemed like backflips were done to keep the board from participating. And so I'm happy, I'd like to see that, you know, the board needs to be involved, just involve the board in the normal course of things with regular old meetings, official meetings. And um, I'm so glad, I'm happy to participate. I'd like to, you know, help move this along in a, a efficient way. I'm skeptical of the ability for us to combine this with the PDD meeting, just because the PDD meeting is a big potential conversation. So uh, I don't know if that's going to work, but I'm open to another meeting, you know, to, to get to. I think uh, respectfully, by moving to optional on PDD, it, <laughs> there is less to be said. I think the only real things ultimately, I, I'll give you a preview of my view of life, and I've told even Rory this afterward to, to thank him for a good. His uh, tour did, and sort of giving my view on, you know, what, what do you do from here? I guess I, I, I just want to make sure that we do the right things for Maplewood and the county properties ultimately in there, because if it's optional for everybody else, then I'm not so, you know, I guess minutia driven on it. I just know that there's certain places we have to do better to make sure they're maximized appropriately for the village and for whoever wants to buy. It's a combined effort, so I don't think there's as much problematically there as you're suggesting for Monday. I still think that that these are two large topics. Um and they they should be can we do another meeting? I mean, well, we barely could get this one's scheduled well, uh, it's, it's, only, it's only one more week and I'll, I'll be honest with you if we're talking pain, pain happens fast. So yeah. that can be done pretty quickly if you secure a contractor. Well, let me see if the school district's securing somebody right now for their own stuff, because maybe that's how we save money ultimately right. on well, efficiency. You have to find out if they're using the right to approve the pot. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Or we can recommend it to them because I think well, they should be doing it too. Obviously, it lasts longer. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. So we'll, okay. We'll, so I'll work with Ed to figure out that aspect if you're okay with that. We're talking about maybe expenditures because I'm sure epoxy break is a cheap thing. And then I we're going to ask them. Did I send you linear photographs or something? Mm -hmm. But anyways, you know, our, our send me the info, you guy, if you can. Are we going to have the contract to do it, and then we could talk about where where the money comes from? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think we have an idea then where to go with this. Uh, I'll work with you get some more information and talk with Ed and we give further feedback at this point. And but this, I, this will be a regular workshop meeting with all of the board. There's no such thing as a workshop. Well, and there's a, no a such special, thing as a workshop. A, 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 a <laughs> Thank you. Special, <laughs> a special meeting. There you go. You got it. Waterby's Billy study report. Uh, I referenced it earlier uh, and I just want to call up at my. Uh, stuff here if I can real quick. Uh, long story short, as I look for it, it's a document that is laid out in three phases. There's a couple things. First off, there's a an opinion on the pricing for the John Street Tower in terms of reconstruction of the current tower or replacement of $1.5 million. However, that is being done without any knowledge of whether or not the current paint can use adhesion methodology instead of 
going down to bare metal to rectify the situation to keep it safe for an X number of future years. If we can just repaint it using the adhesion, adhesion method, we're talking about a million, maybe even more or less than the $1.5 million. So clearly we need an inspection done. We've been working with Jeff to get one scheduled. Uh, we are just waiting for the company to give us the actual day of inspection, which should be in the next couple of weeks. So we are working on that right now to get the information that Don Rhodes and LaBurge needs to give us the final knowledge on that piece of it. What was a little more devastating, at least for me, was the question of uh, this three phase, 15 year approach on water and sewer. Uh, there was contingency built into it, but if you took the net total of everything, it was $58 million if my quick math is right. Mm -hmm. So obviously, if you plan accordingly, you can get some grants, but you also have to pay match into the grants. So you're still talking a boatload of money. For perspective, that 58 million is about 10 years worth of our current value of our budget, just for water and sewer. So water feasibility study was commissioned before Bernadette and I were uh, put in here. I sent it out to everybody. I just wanted to, I guess, hear where we're going with it because we paid 30 grand, I guess, ultimately for at least that or some something related to that because some of that changed along the way too, if you want to understand. What, what is your thought on, again, the $1.5 million question is clearly something that we're working to make sure we reduce so that we have some achievable amount on the John Street Tower. And we'll, we'll get further information very soon on that, making sure we're getting the right information. It's the rest of it that I'm honestly concerned about right now. Well, I, to talk about the feasibility study, the original intent of the feasibility study was to provide long-term planning, i.e. a 20, 30 year plan on how to address our infrastructure with the idea that current areas that we're already servicing achieve full buildup. So to accommodate the additional demand. Um, and to do that, there may be better places than John Street for the water tank. Um, there may be ways that we can alleviate some of our pressure issues and distribution issues um, by relocation of the water tank, or um, we may be able to reduce our pump usage um, so that long-term costs are reduced. So uh, the idea originally was to come up with two or three alternatives, one being just fixing up John Street and leaving them the way they are, but also look at other alternatives, understanding that as we grow and demand increases, that our infrastructure needs to be able to accommodate that. This was also done in the caveat that we were going to apply for funding, grant funds, and hopefully get a large portion of it funded. Now, that is not a guarantee. Um, and you can apply and may have to reapply in multiple years. Um, meanwhile, nothing gets better. Um, you can wonder how what the rate of decay is, um, and that's what the assessment will do. Um, we have a five had one five years ago. We we're trying to get one commissioned and started very soon. Um, and we'll see. What has happened in five years, and that will allow us to project what we need to do, um, whether we have time or we don't. Um, obviously, when you have a shorter amount of time, the less long-term planning you can do. So, however, I looked up the scope in that executed contract, and it seems we've kind of gone astray. Um, and what we originally asked for, um, we actually- I'm confused to be honest with you with myself with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, we really haven't got. Um, so I don't know if there needs to be a meeting to say, you know, we need to refocus and find out what we need 
Um, I think you got a flavor for where my confusion was with yeah. the fact that I invited Don to the Eric Johnson discussion in the first place because it wasn't clear who the heck was taking care of sewer exactly between the two of them and what was happening. Yeah, I was surprised as you were to find out that LaBerge was doing sewer because there is absolutely nothing in the scope of services saying that they're doing sewer. So that is kind of a significant scope creep to bring in a whole other element without you know, no, Don, Don does make the point when you do water, you do sewer, et cetera, et cetera. I get that too. So, but right. in terms of the scope, you're right. Yeah. And as I said earlier, there is an economy of construction, but having two separate firms do two separate designs, um, there's no economy of design. You're either designing twice as much or each one's doing half. Um, so that and by doing that, you might actually move things along a little quick, more quickly by splitting things up between design teams. So I guess my thoughts on this are, I, I think we probably need to revisit this and find out what it said after we get the assessment done of the water towers mm -hmm. and find out where we're at and do we need to do short-term planning or do we still have the ability to do long-term planning? I agree. I just want to say one thing about the, per the person you were saying about the relocation of the water tower. Uh, if you look at phase three, it states Roland Street storage and well wealth field improvements, $12.2 million. And I think part of that number comes from the 2017 study that was done about doing a relocation and trying to see if it was worth doing the relocation, which was, I think, around $10 million at the time. Uh, with respect to that, because if you could add customers along the way, you could pay for itself over time. What we've deduced from conversations with Boston and our knowledge of Milton currently is there's probably no need because you're not going to make it back. There's not enough customers you can serve in Boston to really make it worth that. Ultimately, one of the things we absolutely need to visit, which is obviously not in this study itself, but something that you and I have discussed, I think, quite a bit, and we need to actually do, is I think it's been five years, four or five years since water rates went up and sewer rates went up. And I'm not saying we want to gouge our village by any stretch of the imagination, but there's awareness to the idea that we didn't go up with inflation at any point in time during the last five years. And if we're going to have to pay for some level of improvements, we're gonna to have to raise more money to do it ultimately. And usage obviously is probably what you're doing. Right. What is that part of what the study is gonna show was how much money are we going to need? Then how does that translate into rates? Well, it's it's to a tough part because sewer has to be supported with with the sewer fund. Exactly. And actually, water should be supported by the water fund. But it's also tough because you don't know what grant level you would get at any point in this necessarily but, but either. There's a ways to model. You know, if you need X dollars and you got so many users and you predict maybe an increase of a certain percent. It, it, it's, it's a model, but it gives you a feel for whether you can expend that money and not, as you said, gouge, gouge the users. Mm -hmm. I mean, according to at least, I think what LaBerge said, they said our, our rates are very low. The weirdness though for us is that water rates are affected by outside users. So we have this like customer base that we haven't necessarily tapped into as things grow outside our village. They don't take our sewer though. And so that's why the water and sewer disparity exists even further. Ultimately, Julia, correct me if I'm wrong, sewer is lagging water in terms of pool of money. Yeah, correct. And, and in the village, we have, I think, major sewer issues. And one of the things that concerned me about the schedule is that it has the water leak protection survey and the inflow infiltration evaluation in two years from now, 2024, I thought we had agreed, at least, you know, under under um, uh, Mayor Fitzpatrick, that we would spend ARPA money to get at least the sewer study in the critical areas done, pay for it with that infrastructure money, such that we get that data and find out where we have to. 
fix sewers and then next year go for the money to fix but this thing looks like you're waiting another two years to even know where you have to fix well you're assuming Don knows we have the ARPA money to spend on it though too and I don't think you necessarily knew what ARPA money we had to do certain things like that so I think what he is trying what he tried to do here is rank order in time frame things to do but if you have money you can spend specifically on that and you need to or want to then there's nothing saying you can't pull it out of priority order and do it at that point yeah i mean i, I think we that. yeah we need both the, the leak detection and the the we have to know where the pipes go and i'll tell you at least on stormwater from blue niles is we have pipes we don't know where they go and and the late, latest event at saratoga avenue and then there's wiswall park you know the there's an aqueduct. Speaking with Jeff now, again, this aqueduct hasn't been un uncovered in 80 plus years, but there is an aqueduct. And, you know, I, if anyone doesn't know what an aqueduct is, it's basically laid up pieces of stone in a, in a box format that uh, supposedly, again, none of this has been confirmed, that sanitary sewer is running through under Wiswell Park. So if we um, wanted to do anything in Wiswell Park, this would obviously have to be addressed before we do anything in Wiswell Park. And I talked to Randy Pearson said that me last week, to be honest, about the question of she she had these questions and referred to yeah. Judy's work as well. And she asked me what would you view as you know the reality of moving forward and i said to her and this is my view and only my view so i'm not saying this is a board view in any way shape or form but just the sensible common sense thing i would think is do what you can to the park right now next year when we are going underneath front street etc do your evaluation next year all with that because in terms of scope location etc you're there already in the meantime, if Wiswall Park folks want to get a master plan together that is less rushed, more sensible, more buy-in from the community, they'll have over a year and a half to do that so that they can attack it in 2024 while we're attacking things underneath to degree anything needs to be attacked like that in 2023. So yeah. make it look good, figure out what's going on, go for the bigger uh, plan later on, ultimately would be how I would do it with that knowledge, Sean, and I agree with you in that respect. Well, I think the fact that there is what they call infiltration, which means that, frankly, sanitary sewer is going where it's not supposed to go, um, into the ground, into the groundwater, um, or into our streams, those need to be addressed ASAP. Because yeah, if that is actually the case, right. that requires immediate attention. Right. Because so, eventually someone of authority will have to report that to BEC. And that opens up a whole other can of worms. Yeah, so I would say get on that. <laughs> well, you're saying 1B and 1B, basically, water leak detection and flow infiltration would be ARPA money ultimately spent on that. Is that where, what I'm hearing? Yeah. You know, I'd support doing that sooner than later, too, using our money. Uh, but particularly so, the sewer issue because of the fact that both Blue Niles and this report about Wiswall indicates that we both may have infiltration issues. Those are serious. Well, okay. let's, I think what we need to do, Sean and I, since again, unless we want to call a special meeting on it, Sean and I talk with Don further in this realm. And explain them we have these funds at least that could be expended toward that at this point. Well, and given the fact that there's nothing in this scope regarding sewer, I prefer we use our village engine. Well, I, the only question I want to ask him is is there a reason he's got it in 2024, not earlier? That, that Let's find out why he wrote it this way. And then we can do whatever the heck we want. That's up to us. But let's have the overall conversation with somebody who put together a $58 million document here. To see why that three hundred sixty-six thousand dollars was put in two years from now instead of now. Yeah, I also support going with Lavella for the sewer study, uh, but doing it sooner than later. And Julia, how much do we have in offer funds? I believe currently on spent, um, we didn't use seventy-seven thousand of our first year payment, and then we just received the second payment of two sixty-seven. So, so we have about, about thirty thousand short. Huh? About thirty thousand short compared to what this is suggesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I mean, we can release the consumer study. 
going infiltration study going without any problem. Well, again, what we would have to do here ultimately is a talk with them, b talk to Labella. Ultimately, if we determine we want to move it off in, we want Labella to be in. C, whoever's doing the actual work is probably going to have to be RFP to this value ultimately. Mm -hmm. And so it is a process and we have to make sure that we're doing the process in a way that we're all in line with it because you know an RFP process is not painless for everybody. Um, many are. I know, and it's not painless. <laughs> and, uh, you know, but I think immediately because for one, we don't want to get into winter when you can't study these things. Absolutely. This will help Front Street too, right? I mean, the yeah. study will. Technically, it should, yeah. But again, it's a question to be answered, I think, by the folks that know better what would well, be happening with this. If that aqueduct continues on to front, I mean, that whole downtown area really needs to be assessed for sewer. So, Sean and I will work on, uh, I'll talk to you about your schedule and speak my schedule and call Don. He's usually pretty readily available to me. Mm -hmm. We'll figure something out. You can get Spike phone and we'll go from there. But he may be away right now, but we'll find out. So it's Eric, though, too. So, right. So we'll, we'll get it as quickly as we can taken care of in terms of that conversation. Okay. Public comment number one. Who wants to go? I see Bob. Uh, he wanted to talk earlier, so I'm going to let Bob go uh, first, actually. He did his hand up earlier. I shunned him. I do have uh, the text for the motion from uh, oh, Beck Towers. If you want to write it down, just pass it down. It might be the easiest way while folks talk. Okay. Go ahead. Bob Cavanaugh, 20 Crest Line Drive, Forest Park, for everybody. He sat up here and talked for hours again tonight. Basically, wasted a lot of people's time, including and the enforcement. You're talking about High Boulevard or any street in the village, and you put up the signs and you put up your speed could be, your speed limit is. And if there isn't a black and white car on one end or the other to enforce it, nobody cares. So, once again, you're talking all this stuff around. The real problem is there's no way to enforce it with the staff that we have right now. Second thing, Signs. You're talking about all the other signs you can get. I'll tell you from being at court with Carla on a regular basis, there's some signs you don't even have to write a rule around because the New York State traffic law will cover them or park, no parking, all of those type of things. It'll make her nights at court easier and it'll make your coffers a little bigger because we'll actually have something on the street we can enforce. So you had your union sign earlier tonight for the street signs. The other signs are the ones, there you go, thank you, <laughs> my assistant. The other ones are the ones that have laws already attached to them that we can't enforce, that you can't read the sign. And if you want to look at one, you can stand in the middle office at the village hall and look out at the telephone pole across the street. You can't read the no parking sign. So if you're not going to give us stuff to enforce, stop talking about enforcement. Thank you, Bob. Anybody else? Okay. So I'm really glad that I feel like we made some progress towards, um, you know, getting a um, study done about this sewer problem because um, up to this point, I hadn't heard anything direct. I heard it were now, um, like last week. I did hear it you know, a couple weeks ago by someone about a sewer problem. In the so I had not heard this directly, and, and I should have I should have been told something, being that we're starting to plan, you know, the future of this whole park and trying to involve everyone in the village. So um, I've been thinking about this, and I'm bringing this tonight not as a uh, uh, friends of Wiswell Park committee because I didn't bring it up. With them two weeks ago because I didn't know. And so uh, our meeting is tomorrow night. So we'll talk about it more then, I guess. But uh, the situation of the sewer in the downtown area is something that concerns me as a citizen. And this was also brought up when we did the committee walkabout in Wisdom Park and we saw these um, openings, connections for the water and the sewer, whatever they are. And there was the one, you know, hard 
metal plates that really two people can just lift up and, and access and the water of the in the uh, soil goes down because apparently some machine collapsed the dirt in that area. So, you know, there's a safety issue in that area where the spring is and against the building. Um, <coughs> so, and that's possibly caused by the sewer line break or it's, you know, maybe it was the old uh, basement of a building that was there. But anyway, uh, so there's a sewer, sewer and water line that goes under Roosevelt Park. Which work was the, uh, I don't know how to put it on that, but um, what is it? Uh, so uh, the spring itself can't be used because apparently there's a leak in the water pipe on Front Street. <coughs> so the spring is turned off. No one can access the spring. And this was really a drawing thing for people to come to the park. And that's part of the reason why uh, the Rotary was interested in building a pavilion, a new pavilion for the spring, and why, you know, we're trying to improve this ballpark. So now, you know, apparently we have to wait on a study being done to plan to do necessary repairs and you know, having it being put off till next year just delays anything we want to do in this whole park, which again is already, I already knew it would take at least a year, year and a half of planning. You know, it's not something that we thought we would do over, overnight and, you know, have a new park by next year. But still, this is putting it off even further. 20 seconds. Uh -huh. I just want to say, you know, the conversation with Lorraine was good in so far as I think she shares the concerns about trying to jam through changes in general. And if nothing else, and I think from that you can vouch for this, there needs to be a full on buy in by folks on what the next plan is for the park. That means take a year, take it slow, get the buy in, get the input. Because I think the biggest mistakes we have made with respect to Wiswell Park were really started by trying to rush things through and maybe get things to happen and too fast and everything that we've uh, felt, you know, has been wrong in this, it's just too fast sometimes. And here's a chance to fix it uh, for the time being, make it look great, figure out next year when Front Street's gonna be probably revitalized in some format, what to do with it and make it part of it, try keep, the park open to some degree so that everybody's fine where they are with respect to a concert here or a farmer's market there and be ready in 2024 to have a plan where you, you attack pieces of the park so you can still keep it open in some format. I think that personally for me is just the smart way to do it. It also opens it up to good folks like yourself to have the right input and guidance and leadership to make good things happen there once and for all. I keep telling people, this is a new committee, this is a new time, forget everything, we all work together, we're going to put down all the ideas, we're going to find out what people want. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> club, it's a club, I get it, it's a club with the help of the Park Street Board, go ahead. <laughs> this, this, is, this idea was brought in 2020 and went through presentations to this board, went through revisions, went through surveying the businesses. So it, it's not, I don't think it was rushed through, it's 2022. Liz, everybody who's talked about this plan thinks it's the worst plan that's ever been crafted in a piece of paper. Sorry, Ray. Um, I know you didn't. <laughs> there, there, there is this alternate plan where basically I took, you know, the plan and showed that you could put farmer's market in right. and and that's something that i i gave to judy and and i think you know let everybody look at it but most of the elements that we reviewed over two years people found very attractive and probably you know i'm assuming that whatever you guys come out with will be pretty similar to what we did with the exception of excluding farmer's market I don't know if that's true, uh, to be honest with you. I don't. 
And I, I won't sit here and try to pretend I know that answer until I hear from folks that actually get the buy-in and get the, or, or, or ask for buy-in on this ultimately. I think if you if we give you enough time because we have to take some time on certain things, let's use the time wisely in that type of situation where we have to. Go ahead, Judy. Now, just one more last sure. comment was that the person who did the design was tasked with certain parameters. Yeah. And that's not to take away anything from the design that they did. hundred percent. But I think we we heard in the last meeting a lot of people did not like it. But we know, yeah. we know what, and so we switch things around and there's plenty, I, I think there's plenty. Right. And, and part of the issue, if we're gonna make new structures that require footing, there has to be a complete utility survey of that area because you do not wanna put a structure on top of a uh, working utility. Because we ever gotta fix it, now we gotta tear the structure. So, right. um, so that's kind of, the first template you need, and then decide where you're going to put structures in between. I don't know if there's any utilities in there other than no, you know, utilities. Yeah. yeah. So well, we know there's a water, there's some water ground uh, lead yeah, in there somewhere, yeah. obviously. <laughs> well, that was added. Let's go to Gina. It's a club, not a committee. Rosie. <laughs> Gina Morosi, Santa Glory Lane. Uh, Mark Leck and I were out actually talking to merchants. Almost every merchant on Front Street about you know, Monday, which they're all very excited about, by the way, and the majority of them will be participating, but I digress. We were also talking about Roosevelt Park because they heard that Mark and I were taking the lead on it. And the one thing that the majority of the merchants said to us was they value the openness. They don't want it filled in and cluttered. They want to keep it open. In fact, they several said, that they like the design that's there, it just needs to be fixed. A new um, pavilion, uh, possibly doing something about the flagpole, um, new benches. The gardens are fine the way they are, they just need to be fixed, we all know that. Uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the trees need to be trimmed back and that'll create more openness. Um, the, the hedges along the building, and I have a question, maybe somebody can answer for me. Is the building, Right to the lot, property line of the park, is there no? It's very possible there's zero setback based on it how things have happened in business districts. Building attached to it. Yeah. Okay, because no, the, right the burning yeah, bush that is along the building yeah. <laughs> is gro literally growing on the building. So that tells me that the root system is growing in the building. So we have to be very careful what we do with that. So trimming it back right now, squaring it off, and helping with the movies. So these are just the, these are the things for the fix up. But the majority of the merchants on Front Street like the setup of the park the way it is. It just needs an update. I went to uh, the farmers market was uh, having coffee and nomad actually uh, over there, and uh, great to see them uh, every time being with their station stuff there. I, I missed you uh, this weekend, <laughs> Bernadette. But um, there was somebody uh, who was there who actually has the original set of plans for Wiswall Park and conveyed to me at first he's going to try to get them to me because i'm curious to see what they were he conveyed that it was really set up to be a walking park uh, in its original stages now whether or not you maintain it as such you, you obviously want to keep it some history alive in it but you also have different functionality over time i get that but it, it would be interesting to see those plans to the degree that he uh, can find them for us so actually i have a number of old postcards and the church. Yeah, and, and the park was full of bushes. It wasn't open in the in, in its earlier forms. Well, the, regardless, that's what they, the merchants would like no. to and, see. And yeah. well, they're gonna do a survey and yeah. get some more details as well. Right. Okay. Um, Next Bob. Bob Bush, same with your dad. Good love, Bob. Louder. All right. Mayor, you mentioned about possibly raising the water tax. Water fees, yep, water rates. Before I ask the question about there is some water being paid, what, 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 pay, what does that bill pay? And why is it not paying for itself? You're going to try to implement some sort of plan to get the water to pay for itself so we're not in the predicament we are where we have to go for grants or whatever to get money to replace our parks we need to replace? 
I'm going to defer to Julia because she gets attacked with this question more often than anybody here. We've had yeah. this conversation. I'm going to give her the chance to explain Actually, that. Contrary to the popular belief that the water system has to only go with water expenses, the village does have a slightly different circumstance in that it provides water to users outside the village. Um, and that to be said, there's no restrictions on where we have the water now. Um, how we plan for that additional funds with raising rates should be dedicated to water, um, but there is actually no restriction to how we have it set up for it. So there's kind of a dichotomy answer to your question where you're going with it is essentially if we raise water rates, what are we going to dedicate them to? And my view, I think the most up here is we put those increases where they belong in water infrastructure because why wouldn't we at this point? We need that money to go somewhere where it's needed, that is where it's yeah, needed. To, to his point, there are most municipalities have a separate water mm -hmm. yeah, We just correct. have a special so, circumstance on how we provide outside. Is that a special circumstance? It's not, not rare, um, but there is a nuance in the way that um, we are allowed to have our water fund in the general. Fund. Yes, we're allowed to, but we could have a separate water fund. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we have a dedicated sewer fund. I don't see why we can't have a dedicated water. Yeah, that, that is law. That is law, actually. Sewer water yeah. is not. I mean, there's, you know, I mean, if you ask our accountants, I think we we have. I mean, I have looked at just the feasibility of separating the water into its own water fund. Um, and depending on the tax burden that we put on the taxpayers, it could be potentially a three-year high tax burden, you know, tax height um, over the course of three years or spread it out over 10 years, but it's not going to be an overnight. Well, I've seen that because we're going to replace the water pumps. 20 years from now, the point was mentioned, you mentioned you had a 20 year life span. So in 20 years, we're getting money from That's what I'm trying to get at. So we need to like plan so we know the stuff that we're going to replace their lifespan. So 20 years from now, when that water pump goes, we can say, here's the money. It's been doing exactly so like begging the queen or trying to figure out where this money's coming from. And that's that's the exact conversation that we've been having, Sean and I, generally, both sewer and water, because I, like I said, I keep saying I can't believe it's been four or five years since rates have gone up. And knowing that we have these issues, why aren't they or why weren't they ultimately for some reason? I think it needs to be a policy that we raise those rates at a regular small increment instead of what's been done historically is keep them the same for five years and then whoop. And then I 100% agree. agree. And, it needs to be handled but differently. I'm also disturbed to hear that if we separate our water, we're going to have to raise taxes. Yeah, where are you going to get the money? You're putting it into general fund for a reason. It's covering something all this time. I mean, it's covering more than just water. Correct. Like all the streets. That's why I see on the the, the question is, is it okay to do that? The answer is yes, because we're serving outside users and allowed to marry into the general yeah. fund. But then the other question is, if you raise rates, what are you going to do with that raise? And the answer I would assume from all of us is we're going to apply it to something we need to apply to, specifically water in, uh, infrastructure and sewer sewer infrastructure. I go back to the whole fire fund argument that fire funds should be for fire. That's by law. Um, law aside, it's the way well, you're doing I, I, it. Law no, aside? No, really? no, I mean, so you, no, the law aside, you can do it or you cannot do it, but that's your choice. You're saying that the water revenue is supporting the village. Yes, it is. You know that? How long have you been on the board? Okay, folks, <laughs> folks, folks, folks. Okay, Bob, anything else on your Sorry. Uh, how much time do I have? About a minute. Ellie? Uh, one thing I want to do as much as anybody at order. Thank you. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yes, you got a minute, Bob. Um, Thank you. Trustee Raymond, you mentioned that the aqueduct's been there for 80 years. I, I, I'm that's a guesstimate. I mean, well, a long, yeah. very long time. Why yeah, you guys yeah. been on the board? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah what, so, my question is why is the first time this is such an urgency that we have to get this done? When you guys have been up there for so long, and now we suddenly have to get this done. Because well, we just found out about uh, it. Yeah, it came to our attention just recently. And then, um, actually, it was Mr. Black who 
mentioned something about a steel panel. So I inquired about it. And I think that was six months ago or something like that. Yeah. Uh, but, um, and then Jeff got back to me. That particular location, from my understanding, is actually an old foundation. It's not part of the aqueduct. Um, but um, I was brought to my attention that there is some sort of aqueduct running out of there. And I think the increased sense of urgency is simply because we're talking about doing major things to Wiswall Park. So obviously, if we're going to do that, we need to address what's underneath Wiswall Park. Yeah. I, I, and forgive me for assuming you mentioned before about the sewer and so on and so forth. I assume you guys kind of knew about that because it was part of the sewer. No, um, so I apologize for me assuming about that. Um, uh, I, yeah, and and it's a regulatory issue. I understand that because some of the sewer is so old, some of our infrastructure is so old, there's not good complete plans and records of a lot of stuff. So it's anecdotal knowledge that passed down through members of the DPW. So that some of the stuff that gets gets lost. So. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> there. <laughs> Mark. Mark White. Uh, said, um, to, just to clarify, so we knew about that. We went through the ground when they were putting up the Christmas tree. The plate was on it, um, but if there's no foundation there. It's it's not stone and brick, and it's probably been there a lot longer than 80 years. Um, and there is sewage going through it. So you saw water? Is that something? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Beads probably smell. Yeah, it, it, yeah it's stank. So yeah. so that's something that. Yeah, it, um, but it's been there for what two over two years now. The plate, and we had the pregnant table on top of it for a while. The plate has always been there two years. What was there before that? What? What was there before the plate? Two years the, plate is... the, the Christmas, we were putting up the tree. The tobacco went through the. I didn't do it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. it, it went through into the sewer. We looked down there. It was, oh, it was great. Serious. They, the guys, went and got a plate, put a plate there, and we put up the tree. So it fell through the ground. Yeah, the tobacco fell through the plate, fell through the ground. But if you notice, there's an indentation as it goes down, you know. As it goes north, that whole thing is like. It sounds like there's an issue with communication between. Well, no, the, the DPW never knew what was there. They were no, but when they, they found it, to alert. Oh yeah. The mayor and say this is what we found today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <well>. Many years <laughs> ago. <laughs> well. Just, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, who else in the room? Great. Two questions. Uh, Name and address. Just so I Name and address. Oh, yeah, right out in 16 over there. Um, so I understand on the sidewalks uh, that we've been talking about, the laws we have and are looking to um, put into place are to do with uh, replacement or repair, right? Isn't that what the. I think that's what Ben was suggesting. Yeah, earlier. yes. You're running your bad new sidewalk, right? Sorry, sorry, go ahead. No, <laughs> well, that'll be my next okay. um, So, if we go up to Forest Park or up to Colonial Hills, yeah. and those people want to put in new sidewalks, we're not going to reimburse them at all, are we, for those new sidewalks that they're putting in? Because they never had sidewalks. So, if they wanted sidewalks, that would that would be down their dollar, right? As I always hear in my right ear, I believe Carla will say that installation, which is putting in a new sidewalk, is covered in the sidewalk law. I remember what you whispered in my ear 13 times so far is right. All right, so they That's could they could put a sidewalk system in up there uh, in Forest Park. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we do need to. There we go. Write the legislation that this applies to areas that have sidewalks first, because that's really what we want to, to improve. Is we've got tons of sidewalk gaps and a lot of sidewalks that are falling apart. I think you would have trouble well, the in there, folks, because yeah. that would be that would be discrimination on property owners. So you got to be careful, right. like commercial right. question. According to what Carl is saying, we we have to 
allow somebody that doesn't have a sidewalk to put a sidewalk in and then make it reimbursed. Yeah, well, it depends on it depends on how we write it. It depends on what the legalities allow us to do. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right um, now, yes. Right now, the law says they get reimbursed. All right. Uh, my second question is is more of a, a concern. Um, about a week or so ago, we picked up a young man that had been in a fight. We being my ambulance squad, um, we picked up a young man who had been in a fight with, and ended up with a dislocated knee. Um, we know we're having problems with the uh, fair. The the fair now. You mentioned that. The team. And we also have the folks who decided to uh, rearrange the uh, restrooms in that uh, as well, or at uh, Gallup Park. Yep. And there's been graffiti in that around mm -hmm. town. Um, the incident with the, the fight was at three o'clock in the morning. Um, I, I guarantee you it wasn't at two in the afternoon that people were destroying bathrooms and things like that. Um, I just want to go back to a discussion from many months ago about not having a curfew. And have we gotten any information from the police department? Because wasn't that was something that was going to be done? Was there going to be a study of some kind as to the effectiveness of that curfew? Uh, um, yes, I know that Chief Hood said he was collecting data. Um, we weren't going to look at it. We we're going to give it a year. And then and look at the data accumulated like oh, over years for a period. Right. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm just hearing a lot and seeing a lot now with, with the, the youth of this town, and, and a lot of the parents don't care uh, because they, you know, obviously if somebody out three o'clock in the morning, they don't either know or they don't care what their kids are doing. And I'm seeing it more and more from my end of business where they're uh, not being supervised properly. And I just was wondering if we had heard anything more about that. And then this was new to me at the fight at the, the fair. Yeah, the fair has an exception, uh, which doesn't involve the curfew ultimately. And one of the things that uh, Dave Bush and I talked about was perhaps approaching them to have some sort of rule built in that under a certain age has to be uh, with a uh, parent or guardian after a certain time to try to avoid what we're seeing and it, it's a bigger broader uh, conversation to have with the fair ultimately because it's their property it's their event but obviously they've been trying to be good citizens with us and so it, it's something i think we can probably talk about figure out if there's a way to do it uh without causing them major issues and make sure safety is uh, key because i think also they would realize if it starts getting out there that year after year after a certain time uh, at the fair, there are fights and danger to be had. Why would anybody go if there are young children or families to the fair at eight o'clock at night or something like that? I know living across from the firehouse, um, I did have some encounters with some young folks over there myself because they were destroying property over there. And they weren't happy when I told them to stop and I was told to F off and everything else. And my Schenectady came out for a few minutes. <laughs> I'm sorry. But, uh, and I know there's been folks from the fire department that have spoken to the same youths over there. Mm -hmm. So I'm just seeing a youth problem, you know, that that I don't know if it's something that can be addressed differently or if we can help out as citizens, uh, what can we do to, to, to help it? Um, yeah, that's what I was curious about, if there was anything with curfew. I mean, current curfew is 16 and under. Yeah. So all those kids will fall into that. Yeah. You know that for a fact. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is. <laughs> Mayor McCarthy just called from Schenectady and he's got a phone. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was, we are all so back to that. <laughs> uh, big coffee. Yeah, sorry, hand up. Is that a uh, case? 21 divisions, three ball, five. One in the town. <laughs> well, Ben was talking about sidewalks, and I agree that need the reimbursement needs to be raised. I think you want to be careful. I think you said something about how many feet you want to reimburse for or something. Somebody like me, my one side is 180 feet long. Okay, I live on a corner, but fortunately, the other corner doesn't have a sidewalk. Long. <laughs> but you take somebody that lives on a corner lot, they're most likely going to have a lot more than 100 feet of sidewalk, and. They should be 
preserving of whatever footage they're putting in, you know, the reimbursement. I think that's something you should look at there. And then the difference in price that you were talking about between commercial and residential. I kind of I look at the central business district when you said that, and a lot of them need new sidewalks. And, and the object of this reimbursement is to entice them. I think you should forget about what tax incentives they get or whatever. Well, I think they should be reimbursed the same as the residents because they're doing a lot for the community trying to run a business here. And you really want to entice them probably more than Joe Homeowner to fix their sidewalk because they're the central of the river. That's my thought. The more traffic sidewalk ultimately face is what they're putting in. I, and I've heard that argument before. So good point there, Dick. Thank you. Anybody else in the room? Well, I've already had both people. We'll have another, another public, issue, but we have another public comment session coming up. So let me be fair. Bob uh, also raised his hand. I'm going I'm to say no for now. Coming up though, uh, we have two on the Zoom. Jen, Remember? sorry. Do you know who that is? I'm going to guess that's Foreman Phillips. I'm just going to take a guess. That's Foreman. That's how I remember that last time this happened. No. no. Can you hear me? This is. This is Foreman Phillips speaking. Can you hear me? Can you uh, hold on one second, Foreman? We got to turn up our volume in house here. One second. That's why. Oh, yeah, you're way low. Okay, Foreman, go ahead. Okay. Hello, my name is Foreman Phillips. I live at 101 Hyde Boulevard. I'm going to come back to that. But I want to share with the board an experience I had a few days ago. I opened my front door to five garbage trucks lined up on Hyde Boulevard from East High all the way to the neighboring lot, 99 High Boulevard, slowly churning their bins, spewing out exhaust for one hour. I was not expecting that and it was not a pleasant sight. Let me tell you some more about where I live. I live on Hyde Boulevard to my north. My neighbor included Elizabeth Cormos. She is a trustee of the village uh, sitting up front there. She is also, according to the internet, the CEO of her own corporation calls, called modestly enough Cormos and Company. Her husband, Sandor Bonvel, um, a different last name, also is the CEO of his own corporation. I believe it's currently called Boston Spa Compost Initiative, or at some time he worked for Earthview Environmental Services. Last September, Elizabeth Con Cormos transferred ownership of the other property north of me between my lot and her original lot to her son, Evan Osmot. I have not met Evan Osmot. I've talked to him and I've exchanged emails with him. My point is five people or three people and two corporations, none of them had the courtesy to tell me that they were about to pour footings in concrete and would have a number of cement trucks as well as a crane to handle the pipe that they use nowadays to carry concrete from the trucks to the site. It, it stretches 80 feet in the air. It is quite an impressive thing. None of them said anything to me about this happening. And you can imagine what I was thinking. Are they building a corporate headquarters maybe? <laughs> it was a surprise. 20 seconds, Foreman. <laughs> One of the advantages of living in the village is a neighbor, a village of friends. Friends are considerate of their neighbors. My neighbors are inconsiderate. Thank you, Foreman. If I like yes, you can go. Comment that the builder, at his request, put up uh, 
silt fencing, you know, such that he was worried about the mud. He has tried to address, my son is having a house built. I didn't know that they were pouring the foundation. I didn't know they'd have, they, they were not garbage trucks, they were cement trucks. And they were there for maybe an hour or so as they did their thing. I mean, he's building a house. You need to pour a foundation. Um, you know, I. <laughs> so no corporate headquarters, is that what you're telling us? Uh, yeah, I mean, I am a part-time <laughs> consultant. I work from home. I've never had a client to my house. There's no parking. My husband also is a part-time, you know, and uh, it's not a corporate. We're both LLCs, like you are, Frank. Um, yeah. I'm making a tip from the email if I ever did that, but same difference. I yeah, so it's pretty small time um, business and does not disrupt the neighborhood. Thank you very much, Foreman. Thank you. We also have somebody else. Uh, once Jen takes away speaking ability there, and gets the other hand up. Uh, I can see only an L. What is it? Lisa. Lisa. Lisa S. Lisa Spidel, I presume? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Lisa Spidel, 106 Prospect Street. Um, I, two, well, three things, but uh, the first two are in reference to two comments that have already been made tonight. Um, Bob Cavanaugh um, hit the nail on the head, uh, basically. You know, you, you have all these um, codes and laws that you're making, but there's no point, you know, in putting things on paper if you do not have uh, enforcement to take care of the, the issues, which leads me to say to what Foreman Phillips just said, that we're a neighborhood of friends, supposedly, which if people aren't considerate to each other and respect each other, respect our properties, respect the village code or just, hey, you know what? My son's building the house. There might be some trucks coming by. Hey, just be ready for that. That's all it takes. That's what it is to be a neighbor, to communicate, to talk. When somebody has a problem, hey, address it. But the code, if you're, if you're gonna have it and you're gonna write it, you need to enforce it. And if we have code enforcement officers that don't do that and things that take months and months and months and neighbors that don't want to be neighbors or good neighbors, they're just, you know, a resident living next to you, they're not a neighbor, then, then what's the purpose of writing these codes slash laws? Um, one other thing that uh, I want to bring up, uh, Ben Baskin, Trustee Baskin, excuse me. A while back, you uh, a couple months ago, or maybe it was two or three meetings ago, uh, with the smoking law that you wanted to put on the books, and we were talking about the governor was putting something in in, uh, in effect. I believe that was only for state parks that the governor put into effect. So that, will that be addressed with the village still? Lisa, I, I looked at that actually just to clarify, and it is for any municipal or state park. I saw articles that suggested exactly what you're saying. I looked at the law itself because there are other articles that said otherwise it is for any municipally owned or state park. So it, it is does cover us. Yeah, there was a press release that went out that said state parks. Yes, but the law, like Frank says, covers everything. Okay, good to know. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. And it, it does cover marijuana in addition to uh, cigarettes. Yeah, they, they looked up the state definition of smoking. It's very uh, wide. But not vaping. I don't think it's ever legal. We could have said if we got on the sign anyways, because I don't think most people read those laws. True, correct. Anyway, I, I think it goes out to be honest with you. Uh, okay, I, if uh, nobody has anything else to say for this public comment session, <laughs> you're fine. I don't think there's anything that's going to be majorly uh, wrong here with our motions. So, do you want me to wait for any of these? No. Okay. <laughs> Can I get a motion that the attached budget transfers with the following change? Um, so the first line for debt service um, for the bond, bond payments, um, it's actually going to be $157,779.12 rather than the 
And then the debt service interest line is going to be $24,127.82 versus the $32,026.93 that it states. Be approved. <laughs> I'll make that motion. Trustee Raymond. I'll second. Trustee Fundensa, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Make a motion that Unifier Company number two be authorized to expend the amount of $8,520.68 for two portable radios. I'll make the motion. Trustee Baskin. Second. Trustee Raymond, discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Can I get a motion that the town of Milton be granted permission to utilize the firehouses for the primary election on 8-23-22 and the general election on 11-8-22 from 5 a.m. to 9 p.m.? Make the motion. Trustee Fundanza. No second. Trustee Raymond, discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Can I get a motion that the Friends of Wiswell Park Club may host a spruce up weekend at Wiswell Park on, or from Friday, uh, July 29th through Sunday, July 31st, with rain dates being Friday, August 5th through Sunday, August 7th. This motion is made with the understanding that there are groups using the park on Friday night and on Saturday mornings. And the friends of Wiswell Park are, are required to work around the, those events. For the purpose of clarity, the spruce up weekend is to include weeding and trimming only will be done by the Friends of Wiswell Park Club and the volunteers in consultation with the Park and Tree Board. I'll make the motion. I think we're gonna got you on that one. So Trustee Fundanza, would you like to second event? Second. Uh, Trustee Baskin, discussion? Um, how does our insurance cover them doing work on the park? What's what's our liability? There was actually a discussion that we had in Jen. I think you were involved early on when you were with the village. Um, that we actually discussed the liability, and technically, by nature, we should be requesting certificate of liability like we do events. But because they're clubs, it wouldn't be feasible, you know, financially for them to provide that. So technically, we would be providing that. Well, liability. they're like a group of. Well, so what? What if just like a group of volunteers for the day came together? So they're not anything. same situation. If any so, injuries did occur, it would be on. Right, so we're we're whereas BSBPA uh, carries their own liability insurance, for instance. So it's a more organized scenario there. No shopping. <laughs> no, 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 don't have the equipment. Yes. <laughs> Please and thank you. Does that mean you can even put it voted? I don't know how happy that is. Be careful. That was a big yeah. one and loaded a bell for a few I'm mad about but I requested this. <laughs> Uh, you know what? That's a good point. And that's my no oversight. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, the other question is we fetch this ultimately after Mike. So that's probably why I did that. Not thinking. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Getting a motion to move forward with the intent to purchase the necessary equipment to update and replace the lighting and security for Kelly Park at an estimated cost of $5,500. Approving this will approve a budget amendment partially funding this expense in the amount of $3,500 from contingency. Note, this purchase will include equipment, rentals, and supplies to run additional electrical for lights in an updated and more extensive security system. I'll make the motion. Trustee Fundenza. Second. Trustee Raymond. Discussion. Um, the balance is coming from? A70. Yes. Yes. Doesn't it say that? Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. So it's just it's, question us. <laughs> some of it's rental, so it's an ongoing cost. No, it'll just be a day rental. Um, Me meaning we're not going to own, yeah. it's not all equipment, it's, it's some service or rental. Uh, ditch ditch? Yes, yeah, right um, so we don't have that, the village doesn't have that, oh. so we just rent it for however long it takes to, to make it do the project. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Make it a motion that Navistar is awarded the contract slash purchase for the village's purchase of two new international dump trucks, 2023 model HB607, for the estimated purchase price of $200,371.14 for each dump truck, with such purchase contingent on obtaining the USDA grant financing as detailed in the attached letter of intent. I will make that one. Trustee Raymond? I'll second. Trustee Cormos, discussion. Um, how much so far we purchased? This is all in line with that uh, one yeah, point. Where, where are we in that list? This is five out of the six pieces once we're done tonight. Oh, doing these. Uh, okay. Correct. Am I right that? We have one, no, two. Yeah. Pickup truck's the only thing that you're all right. So that's about $100,000. I think for that one. We have the, uh, the existing back 
truck in front of my, well, in front of my son's property, and it has duct tape coming <laughs> over it. So I'm yeah. sure toothpicks too to keep it a bit. Yeah. Uh, all favor. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Making the motion that United Construction Forestry is awarded a contract slash purchase for the village's purchase of John Deere 524P wheel loader for the estimated purchase price of $174,632.00, with such purchase contingent on obtaining the USDA grant financing as detailed in the attached letter of intent. I'll make that motion. Trustee Cormos. I'll second. Trustee Baskin. Discussion. So that was in the list. Yeah. Not, everything's in the list. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Like she said, the only thing that uh, is left is pickup truck on that list, and uh, we'll see what happens with that in the meantime. And we did confirm that USDA is fine with this approach. Also, uh, Carl asked just for a little bit more detail, and they are fine with that approach, understanding that there is this time delay scenario. And where are we in the USDA process? Trying to get an auditor uh, lined up, and probably get uh, Carla's partner lined up as our lead or as our bonded attorney. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I think a motion that swimming under the stars be approved for August 6th from 8 p.m. to midnight at the Balsa Spa Pool, uh, Village Balsa Spa Pool, excuse me. Uh, here, for those wondering how this is going to look from here on out, this is a good example of it. DBW will supply two men for six hours per 1.5 times rate at approximately $50 with benefits, resulting in overtime for DPW at $900 to $1,000. And the full staff will supply 15 lifeguards, of which approximately eight will receive overtime at 1.5 times rate, resulting in $650 in overtime for full staff. Take a motion. I'll make the motion. <laughs> a motion by uh, Trustee Pantanza. One second. Second by Trustee Baskin. Um, Go ahead. Yeah, question is, is, what did we budget for this? Yeah. This is on the budget, right? Jennifer and Julia. So I believe we increased the budget for swimming under the stars $1,500 from last year. That to be said, as discussed at last meeting, overtime or DPW labor or any labor has not really been allocated to any events. So um, that to be said, in doing this, it's just kind of like an in-kind donation of DPW, unless no. otherwise noted. No, we're paying them. We're paying them, but for this event, it's considered. So, that's so that's the we're village is... Providing this as an additional in kind expense. Yep. Yeah. Is that how it's always been? It's never We've been never out. actually specifically set it and broken it out. We're doing it now because we're realizing that the correct accounting method for budgeting is this so that we don't lose track of this stuff. Because yeah, I remember when um, Mayor Woolbright was saying we're going to start tracking this. Well, Mayor Rossi said we're going to and we're doing it. So yeah, let's do so, it. Yeah. So next so year we'll put it in the budget. Well, the, the issue is getting those numbers, and that's what the issue was back in uh, Mayor Wolfley's um, tenure, is that we never were able to get the hours from the superintendent, and that was the holdup and all that. Mm -hmm. So in doing this moving forward, we can track how much hours of DPW dedicates toward events. And thanks to Jennifer uh, for kind of putting the imprint on this first go of it, because this is the learning method now of trying to get this right and in the future handled. And for those watching, if you're going to budget an event, please utilize that resource of Jennifer and Julia to figure out what your overtime imprint is so that you can request it. And that way we're not hanging out there with this unknown that we shouldn't be having anymore. I think people will appreciate this very, you know, detailed format. So. More, more transparent. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, we have a uh, motion a second, I believe, and let's ask a question that yes. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Getting a motion ratifying the approval of one, the water service request by Charlie Bravo Holdings LLC doing business as Saratoga today for the building located at 2254 New York State Route 50 Saratoga Springs, New York, outside the village, and two, the agreement related to such water hookup. Trustee Baskin. Yeah. Trustee Cormos, discussion. I'll start the discussion by saying we uh, had a situation where this had been prior approved and had gotten scheduled. And so we, through email last week, adopted this as an emergency scenario that we approved. We also initiated our first outside user agreement in this whole uh, situation with an escrow that will be discussed in the next motion uh, that is required by law, but never was defined correctly in our fee schedule. Um, we are going to use this template for Milton users, uh, Carl and I discussed today, except for the Roland Street extension, which is a problem because we can't own that 
main that's extending, we have to figure out with the town and with the developer what we're going to do with that exactly. But there are other users in Milton with uh, mains and pipes that are already owned by the village or controlled or handled correctly that we can <laughs> utilize this agreement for and their water service forward if it's verified by LaBella as okay. You understand a darn thing I said. I should <laughs> come up here. <laughs> uh, anybody want to say anything beyond that? I just want to explain that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Did you want to say something? Take a go. <laughs> I got a motion ratifying the addition of a $400 water escrow fee to the village's water fee schedule for new water customers located outside the village pursuant to village code section 200 3. Oh, no, go ahead. Trustee Fundanza, Trustee uh, Raymond with the second. No. There we go. Discussion. This number was uh, based on the idea that a current outside user minimum would be about $186, give or take. Also, if we do contemplate raising water rates, uh, ultimately, then it will be closer to $200. 200 times two periods or one year would be $400. So at least we have the protection of about one year's worth of escrow. And you said there's a the, three month termination. Uh, termination, so that we can turn off their water. Basically. We can at least try to, and they can tell us we can't. Yeah, okay, we can. Yep. Okay. DOH won't like it, but you know. <laughs> but they contracted for it, right. basically. Right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Other business? Yeah. Look at that motion that was. Oh, yes. oh, I'm sorry. Yes. I never made it to myself. Here, you want to hand it to or read it? Go oh, read it and be, be uh, the motion leader for once here. Uh, I made a motion to approve uh, the reallocation of the Garden Club's $2,000 fund to ornamental round stones, number four, and cobble, four to eight inches, steel obelisk for perennial vine, perennial vine, various stakes, trellis for plant support, a home biotone, bird bath, and similar structure to provide water to wildlife mulch. And this was a motion um, uh, made by Mike Keller, seconded by Ed Hirsch and uh, Ray Otten, and passed by the elementary board. You know, it clear, I'm assuming, but uh, yes, can you send in motion? Do you have uh, Jennifer's? But to Jennifer, because she's probably going to do the minutes this week because of Terry's uh, cast. Uh, that's a motion. Can I get a second? Trustee Baskin, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Other business, I'm sorry about that. I guess we should have had public comment for a new motion, but. Oh, yeah, that's right, too. But. <laughs> We we did announce that was coming, guys. Yeah, yeah. So you're right. Um, just we don't have to answer this now, but I'm interested in our progress of make of finding an auditor. I can't. There's you can't find no one. I, I contacted I, three. No one's getting back to me. They're all getting out of municipal you know, auditing as is. I suggest that you contact Carla's firm to see if they have any. Uh, uh, that's <laughs> maybe that's next to. Yeah. Nikon does have like they had some auditors at the. Uh, Whatever that up in the spot, yeah, yep, that specializes. But I'll see if I can find it. I, I might have a few of the top ones. I could have reached out to them. You probably, yeah. Um, then streaming services for this room, or are we moving forward? On? I have actually, I'll be honest with you, not pursued it in the last uh month or so because of a lot of other things going on. But I take that uh, as a very good reminder, and we'll go there. And just so you know, you asked me what's the town of Boston doing. And they're so uh, initially yeah. they, they gave me a quote that I shared with you guys of like 1600. So like, mm -hmm. then I went back, like, where is that? Like, oh, we're, we had to send, send it out the bid and then we're going to install it in August. But now the price is like $77,000. So they're totally doing something way beyond what we want to yeah, do. That, that so, would be enough. <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm not sure everything they're doing, but it's a different, totally different model. Exactly. But we could use. You did get that quote that has some, I think, good information from them for I'm, the 1600. I was surprised tomorrow night. Uh, Eric Connolly is putting the $2,500 for birdhouses on their agenda. And I asked, are, are you remote? And he's like, yeah, I'll zoom on. So I was surprised. Oh, they're not in person. That's what he said. Yeah. I, that's, I couldn't the understand. Planning boards in person. Well, you know, planning boards are tougher. 
because of the yeah. the plans themselves. Yeah. I get that. But yeah, the town board is not. I that's a problem. I have one thing yeah. for other business. Um, uh, I just wanted to remind you, in case it's fell off the radar, that we had talked some time ago, uh, Christine Fitzpatrick and me, to Lavello regarding rebidding some of the elements on the village hall, in particular the two vaults underneath the sidewalk and the retaining wall. Um, I we probably should be revisiting those and seeing if we can split those out and bid them separately so that it's not such a big chunk. When we uh, talk uh, this week about uh, progressing we've done, let's talk about that too. If you have any of the old emails or anything that you wanted to send to me, I, I probably can find some of the stuff, but it's easy yeah, to I'll send in. Right. Frank, have you seen this, this report, the engineering report, which was requested by the board? This is um, August 2020. And then Larry put out, he bundled all the suggestions for um, but there they, they said the retaining wall and Bass Street for condition wall the cleaning and bulging um, patch repairs is effectively failed due to displacement. So that's one of the items. But then I've, I've heard about this, however, I've not yeah, actually I seen the report. This yeah. copy here, but the ball they they said needed temporary bracing um, and that no heavy vehicles should go up on the sidewalk. I wonder to what degree the removal of a lot of the records has uh, had in terms of pushing the building in the direction that may have been causing bulging, et cetera. Well, but the vault thing is, have you been down the basement? Have I been down the basement to see the, the you're talking, the, yeah, I've, yes, I've seen that. You've seen the vault underneath the sidewalk? Yeah. Okay, but that's what they're talking about. That's unsafe. If a, if a heavy vehicle comes on top of it, that was, really the most urgent recommendation. And if I go outside, my Jeep is underground. I'm not going to be happy. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so this is something to add to you to-do list. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Folks. Okay. Just one more question related to overtime. So for the county fairgrounds, it is in the budget to police oh, right? That's overtime. I think there's something in the budget for that. That's a whole nother question. I don't it's believe not so. in the budget. Um, any overtime related to the police was just coming out of the police personnel budget. Um, because that's just a part of the village in which we have the covers within the village limits. I thought there was some separate line I'd like for dollars or something. This has been an ongoing thorn for some people for a while and it's it, you get some fun it's it's a question then. it's a question again you know I, I walked into it so I, there's not much you can say when you know i'm here this year but we've uh, formed a good relationship with jennifer uh and she i believe has gotten the post permanently at least uh on a regular uh not interim basis now so uh she has stated cooperation generally on some other items with us so that's good news and Let's see where we can go with certain questions down there. Because yeah, I mean, they do have <coughs> submission and make. I hear it. Yeah, money on it. They'll they'll claim they pay a lot of uh, money though for the vendors, et cetera, too. So you know, it, it, there's a flip side and all this stuff. Yeah. You know that. I mean, it is not for profit, but you know, up the submission fee by a dollar and give us some money to pay for what we're providing. <laughs> let's let's let them run their business, but tell them what we're looking for, yeah. and maybe they can perform that for us. Uh, any second public comment at this point? Okay, uh, Bob, I, I shut you down there earlier, so let's go first. Uh, I forgot this one earlier. Say, when everybody's talking about the crosswalks and the bump outs and everything on High Boulevard, stop overthinking some of the stuff. If you want to do a, a bump out and paint it, put the stuff like they put rumble strips on the road. So that you've got a, a physical thing there as well as the paint, get them painted and find out what's going on instead of all you're doing is agonizing for another year trying to figure out what's going on. Take a look at it. And the other reason that the crosswalks that Ben was so concerned about and everything are faded is because everyone in the village is faded because they haven't painted hardly any lines in two years. Right. Okay, so pretty much everybody gets equally treated there. So even the high boulevard people aren't aren't stepping out in this particular case. 
Well, I think all the food cost blocks, I actually did an inventory and looked at where they were faded, where I couldn't see them from my car. So, you know, I can pass that list on. I'm sure they faded. Well, somewhere. I watch how many times they drive by with the paint machine in the back of the truck, and I don't need all five figures, four figures in the phone. Well, it's they're not out painting. Haven't been. Dick Duffy? All right, Dick Duffy, 21 of the business. Yeah, I want to be short. Yeah. Probably about <laughs> maybe right after I came back from my trip to Florida, I spoke and I mentioned to the board all of this to go home and watch yourself on YouTube. Okay. Obviously, nobody did that. Uh, I haven't been to some meetings, I've been watching them on YouTube because of what I witnessed here tonight. Plus, look at your audience, they're all gone by now. I think you're discussing everything, that's fine. But I think a lot of these discussions don't need to be here. They, you need to work together. Liz, you're shaking your head, yes. But you sit there and you mimic everything everybody else says, you repeat it. Also, you're pointing fingers, daggers, with you guys, you guys are never gonna agree. That's obvious to everybody in this room. But you're here to do a job for us residents. You're here to work together. Put them differences apart and make it right for this village. But really, you can really shorten this meeting up. I know you can't all meet together. I know the rules and all that stuff. Emails, text messages, phone calls. One could stop in, hey, call up to the mayor if you want to talk to the mayor. Because even though you don't want to admit it, he's the executive officer of this village. Okay? Call him up. We got to talk. You know? Talk to him. Then you can relay it to the other people. I did it for 11 years. You could talk to a lot of people. You could talk back and forth. You could, not that I mind sitting here. I don't mind sitting here all night if you're doing something constructive. But a lot of this isn't constructive. This is all stuff that could be handled way before the meeting. You got two weeks, basically, every other week or whatever. You got a lot of time to talk about this stuff. You asked us, and I don't speak for the fire department, but you asked us to put our agendas in the Wednesday before the Monday. And I believe all other departments are that way too, which is fine. So you can get all your information together. Talk, talk back and forth. Make it easier, make it more presentable. This is disgusting watching all these people leave here because it's their village, you know? They should be able to sit here and be privy to everything. Just take a minute and work together. Amazing, you're never gonna agree on everything, but come out for these people sitting here. Thanks, I'd like to make a comment that one of the reasons these meetings are longer than they were under Mayor Wilbright and under Mayor Fitzpatrick is frankly that you don't share a lot of what you're going to be talking about ahead of the meeting. <laughs> and if you did and gave us a chance to comment and resolve some of that and see where we can reach consensus, I think these meetings would be short. That's just my viewpoint. Case point. Well, you just did what he said. Who else? Anybody on Zoom? Everybody's a bad idea. Board comments, questions, concerns. Going, going, gone. No executive session needed tonight. Can I get a motion that vouchers number 22-01902 to 22-02276 and 22-01983 to 23-00343 be audited and the meeting adjourned at 10.16 p.m. 10.17 p.m. I'll make the motion. Trustee Raymond. Second. Trustee Cormos, discussion. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Good night. Oh,